Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Ultimate Rinnegan and Mokuta Naruto went back in time married Tsunade. Part 2, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description. So let's begin the story. Naruto was with the rest of Team 7, running back to the village, no longer having a civilian weighing them down. He had decided to keep the two swords he had fought with in order to learn, as he wanted to diversify his arsenal of experience. His body was still bloody, his hair crusted and red from the blood to his clothes that he would probably never use again, but for intimidation. He started to think on when the next Chunin exams would be held, and whereas he knew that if he was to be taken seriously by the shinobi world in a war, then they, Team 7, would need to rise through the ranks quickly. He was letting his mind wander when he thought of his talk with Hashirama. If what he says is true, then he will die too soon for anybody but himself, this isn't going to bode well he thought. He looked towards Tsunade. He had all but forgotten his botchan and was slowly but surely, whether he realized it or not, falling in love with her. But of course, his hormones were doing this, so he would have to wait, something he definitely didn't realize he was doing. They were nearing Kanoha's borders, and Naruto turned his Rinnegan on. He could see an almost veil-like essence over the village, even from a distance. He remembered when his botchan had told him about this, and began to wonder exactly how Hashirama had made it. He didn't get much more time to think on it as they came up to the gate. Greeting Hokage-sama, welcome home one of the Jimnin on guard said. Hashirama smiled at the man and nodded. They went to the Hokage's tower to fill in the mission report. The first thing that they saw was Tabarama and Hiruzen looking at the recent update of the books from Kiri and Kumo, their eyes widened. Tabarama looked up and laughed slightly. Well Naruto-kun, you and Team 7 have definitely earned a name for yourselves he said, handing his brother the books to read out. Name? Yuzumaki Naruto. Age? 6 years old. Rank? Kumo. SS, flee on sight, Kiri. SS, flee on sight. Description. Sun-kissed blonde hair, fair skin, about 3 foot 7 inches. Affiliation. Kanahagakur no Sado. Skills. Tujutsu. Lo Jinin, Info Limited, Jinjutsu. Unknown, Kinjutsu. Jinin Level, Info Limited, Ninjutsu. Cage Level, Kinjutsu. Complete Mastery. Note. Do not underestimate. The Jutsu Description. Metallic purple with 4 rings, first 3 have 3 Tamo each. Warning. Dejutsu can control gravity. Thought to be a cross between the Sharingan and the Rinnegan, the eyes of the Rikidu Senen. Bounty. Kumo. 13,750,000 Ryo dead, 15 million Ryo alive. Kiri. 15,500,000 Ryo dead, 20 million Ryo alive. Team members. Senju Tsunade, Hirachimaru, Jiraiya. Side note. He and his team caused the Battle of the Waves. Monikers. Esenbeido no Shinigami, servant of the Shinigami. Everyone was shocked at how fast the news had traveled, and even went as far as Kumo, which was a few days longer with mountain trekking. Naruto was particularly surprised at the moniker he received. Are we in it? Jureya asked, still not recovered from the shock. Hashirama nodded. Yes you are, but since you only took out bandits, you aren't as well known, doesn't mean your ranks are far behind he said before reading out. Name? Senju Tsunade. Age? 5. Rank? Higher rank, kill on sight. Description? Light blonde hair, fair skin, about 3 foot 4 inches. Affiliation. Kanahagakur no Sado. Skills. Tujutsu. Haichunin, Jinjutsu. Unknown, Ninjutsu. Unknown. Note. Do not attack when near teammates, the team works together flawlessly. Peke Jinkai. Mokuten, taught to her by her grandfather, Senju Hashirama, SSS rank. Bounty. Kumo. 23 million Ryo alive, 500,000 Ryo dead, Kiri. 8 million Ryo dead or alive. Teammates. Yuzumaki Naruto, SS rank, Hirachimaru, high B rank, and Jiraiya, high B rank. Name. Hirachimaru. Age. 6. Rank. High B rank, capture on site. Description. Black hair, pale skin, about 3 foot 6 inches. Affiliation. Kanahagakur no Sado. Skills. Tujutsu. Mid Chunin, Jinjutsu and Ninjutsu. Unknown. Note. Do not attack when near teammates, the team works together flawlessly. Bounty. Kiri. 6 million Ryo dead or alive. Teammates. Yuzumaki Naruto, SS rank, Senju Tsunade, high A rank, and Jiraiya, high B rank. Name. Jiraiya. Age. 5. Rank. High B rank, capture on sight. Description. White hair, fair skin, about 3 foot 5 inches. Affiliation. Kanahagakur no Sado. Skills. Tujutsu. Mid Chunin, Jinjutsu and Ninjutsu. Unknown. Note. Do not attack when near teammates, the team works together flawlessly. Bounty. 6 million Ryo dead or alive. Teammates. 
Uzumaki Naruto, SS rank, Senjutsunade, higher rank, and Orochimaru, high B rank. The three were surprised to see this as there was only one man who got away that would have the guts to tell someone about them. He would have to have been watching them during their fight with the mercenaries. Naruto on the other hand felt like laughing, his whole team was in the book, and they were standing there with their mouths open like fish. That aside, the next Chunin exams are coming up soon, and the fire and lightning daimyos have agreed to hold it in Kanoha first this year Tabarama said, getting everyone's attention. And after hearing about the great Team 7, he wants to see you compete in Kanoha's exams as he will be here on business, then with the rakage he continued. Tsunade gulped silently, the rakage had already tried to kidnap her once, and while there was no doubt that she was better than she was when that incident happened, but only 10 people at the very most in this village could stand up to the man who had gained an army killer moniker, and she wasn't one of them. Naruto saw this and squeezed her hand and smiled at her. She blushed slightly but smiled back because she knew that no one else had seen it. They turned back to Tabarama who looked slightly skeptical about what he would say next. This choice is yours and time is on your side, as it has only been a week since Suna held the exams he said. But Naruto said almost stating that Tabarama was leaving something out. Tabarama sighed. But he wants to put you up against three of the top Jinin of Kumo, veterans, one man saw the end of the clan wars, and even fought in a Tabarama said grimly. Naruto looked away from the man to think. Why would he, the fire daimyo, agree to something like this when he only has rumors of our skill to back up he thought before he realized something. We will be fighting as a team right, after all we'll be tired after fighting others if we don't end our matches fast he said. I understand why you would think this, but you will be fighting these three, and that's it, no one else, I hope Tabarama said muttering the last part. Naruto meanwhile was worried. I have no doubt that Tsunade and I can handle them, but if they separate us from Jureya and Rachimaru, then they're likely to get killed he thought. His face grew to one of realization. Which would make Tsunade lose control of her emotions and try to kill them, but they would easily kill her alone, once she's dead the same will happen to me if I'm not careful he thought, dumbfounded that he even came up with something like this. Heh, guess Tsunade-chan is rubbing off on me he thought. It's an attempt to kill us Naruto said flatly. Everyone looked at him like he had grown a second head, but when he explained his theory to them, their eyes widened. Of course, they would have had spies looking into these things, they want to get rid of you for before you can become too strong Hiruzen said. Well then what can we do Jureya asked nervously. Naruto's eyes widened once more. Give me about 30 minutes, and I might have a better solution than just training he said, earning a curious nod from Hashirama. Naruto sat down on the floor near a wall where no one could see him or feel his presence and began to meditate. Akira-chan might know how to solve this he thought as his outer form became unconscious, and he wandered into his mindscape. Naruto's mindscape. Naruto opened his eyes to see his figure change to an 18-year-old teen, just like he had been before he traveled back in time. His mindscape had improved over the years since he was 12 in his time. It was an ideal place for Naruto. A village that once scorned him now greeting him. His subconscious had made any familiar faces into real people in his mindscape. Only instead of the one from his time, it was now from the present time. He walked up to the Hokage monument where he knew Akira was even though he didn't know how he knew. He saw her sitting, looking over the village. You have quite the imagination and memory of Naruto-kun, save a few houses. This place is an exact replica she said. You know why I'm here Naruto stated. Yes, but why should I tell you, I have barely seen you in over a year she said with a bit of anger. Maybe that's because every time I come here, you're asleep he said with a sweat drop running down his face. Akira just huffed at this. If you're that desperate for company then why not just set up a mental link between us Naruto said. Akira could hear the obvious tone of his voice and blushed slightly, having not thought of it. Her quietness was an obvious answer to Naruto. Back to the important subject, is it possible he asked. Yes but the amount of pain that is required to perform it is excruciating, thankfully this is the only sacrifice to be given Akira answered. How do I perform it Naruto asked, slightly relieved. Since Orochimaru knows a lot about anatomy, you can ask him where these points are Akira said as Naruto nodded. First you need to tie the person down to something that's reinforced with chakra, Mokuten being the best choice, then you need to gather the chakra of the bloodline in either each hand, or by combining the two elements that make it, making sure that your hand is fully extended, then ram your fingertips into the solar plexus. This is to soften the pain of the next part she said, making Naruto wince at the thought of doing this. The next part is dangerous, but since you can revive people, it's just more pain. Next you are to make a small incision right over the heart, small as and not deep, you do need to make it wide though. Then once again channel the chakra into your hands only this time make a sort of fist and bring it above your head, and bring it down fast, where the incision was made, and keep forcing pressure on it, have someone start rubbing their hands together, while channeling lightning chakra through them, once you hear sparks coming from them lift your hands and tell the person to shock the other, then just give them about 5 minutes to regain consciousness she said, making Naruto wince again. 
This has rarely been done because even though you get the said Keke Genkai out of it, it would stop anyone doing it again, even Kami-chan had been through it once, and she never done it again, it's that painful and as such, not many know of it Akira explained to him. And what about Dijutsu Naruto asked. Activate the Dijutsu and then channel normal chakra, the chakra that goes past the Dijutsu will pick up on its features and travel to your hands Akira explained. How frequently can this be used Naruto asked Akira. Once a month, just enough time to give the body time to recover and rest she said. Thanks Akira-chan, by the way, don't forget the mental link again Naruto said, making her blush furiously as he turned around. Real world, Naruto became conscious again and started to move, making everyone look towards him. Well Tsunade asked hopefully. There is a solution, but you're not going to like it he said before explaining the horrible procedure to them. I can understand why doing this would make any man want to just drop dead Orochimaru said. So who wants to go first Naruto asked almost sarcastically. Orochimaru, Jiraiya and Tsunade looked at each other before Jiraiya sighed and stepped forward. I'll do it he said. Naruto nodded. We should probably get to a more suitable environment he said. They then left for the medical room. Once inside it Naruto created a table from his Mokuten and put metal braces on it for Jiraiya's hands, feet, body and head, even though the table was more of a pedestal, and then placed a silencing barrier on the room. Jiraiya looked like a nervous wreck as he got on the table and was strapped down. Naruto started channeling chakra for the imt into his hands. As soon as he started Jiraiya's face started to scrunch up as he let out a howl of pain which made even Hashirama wince at. When he began the second part he had to cover his outer ear in chakra to not hear the sudden shriek that came from him, but not before telling Tsune to charge her lightning chakra. When he released the chakra Jiraiya was begging him to stop. He heard Tsunade's hand spark. Now he yelled at Tsune. Tsune dropped her hands right over where Jiraiya's heart was and his whole body shook. When everything calmed down, Jiraiya was unconscious but alive. Naruto activated his Rinnegan and looked at Jiraiya. Well, it worked he said, relieved. Everyone else in the room visibly sighed. Jiraiya started to stir after a few minutes, and the first thing he said was, did it work? His voice was hoarse from the lightning chakra, but he didn't take notice as his whole body was numb from pain. Yeah Naruto said, smiling slightly. But for now just rest Naruto said as he released the metal restraints holding him down. After another blood-curdling scream from Orochimaru after his own operation, Naruto could see that Tsunade was nervous. With Hashirama gone to make sure Jiraiya and Orochimaru were alright, and Tabarama and Hiruzen gone back to doing their duties so they don't pile up, he and Naruto were alone with no adult, something that made her nervous. Naruto saw this and held her hand again, it always seemed to calm her down, so why do anything else? Hey, it'll be alright after he said. This seemed to gain her confidence as she gave him a shy smile. She got on the table and was strapped in. Naruto created a cage bushin before once again performing the surgery. Tsunade started to scream just like Jiraiya and Orochimaru. What Tsunade didn't know was that Naruto was using a special chakra on her, the Shintan. When Naruto heard the sparks and took his hands away and his clone shocked her. He was surprised to see her eyes open almost immediately. But there was something that shocked him even more. Tsunade's eyes were not her own, rich brown eyes had turned to a color that made Naruto's heart stop. Her eyes were a metallic purple, with four concentric rings around her pupil. Well this is unexpected a voice said in his head. You call this unexpected, shit this is both cool and strange at once Naruto thought to Akira. Tsunade saw Naruto's face and got worried. Is everything alright she said in her pain. Naruto looked at her, snapping out of his daze. Yeah, better than expected he said softly. Tsunade looked really confused by this, but as Naruto said that, Hashirama walked in. Well he asked. Maybe you should look for yourself Naruto said. Hashirama looked confused, he couldn't see Chakra, so why would Naruto ask this? As soon as he saw his granddaughter's eyes he gasped. Tsunade was getting nervous, all she could think was that something had gone wrong. How is this possible Hashirama asked Naruto. Don't know, it could come from your wife, but that would be my best guess Naruto replied. Um hello, I'm still here Tsunade said. The two looked at Tsunade and thought. Sorry Tsunade-chan, but until we can figure this out, you'll have to dot he trailed off as he remembered something. Flashback, Naruto was walking back to Tsunade after his training session with him. He could see that she was looking through a book that had to do with blood and bloodlines, but ignored it. Tsunade looked up to him and smiled. Hey Naruto-kun, do you mind if I get a blood sample from you, it's for an experiment I want to try, I need several different samples, so if I get yours, I won't have to get too many to keep track of she said. Naruto was slightly confused but complied and let her put a syringe in his arm to extract the blood. Strangely enough, she looked slightly nervous, but he had ignored that too. Thanks Naruto-kun she said before walking away, her legs shaking slightly as though she had done something she shouldn't have. Then flashback, Naruto's face described quite a few different looks. Shock, worry and confusion just to name a few. 
Sune chan that syringe of blood you got from me, did you inject it into yourself he said as she sat up. No she answered nervously. Naruto looked at her sternly. She sighed before replying yes. Tsune chan you know you could have killed yourself if only our blood was compatible Naruto said, almost like scolding parent. Tsune looked down and almost seemed to pout. Naruto sighed in defeat. She's damn well lucky she didn't get herself killed he thought. Just, just go and get some rest he said in frustration. He looked toward where Tsune was leaving and rubbed his temples. Of all the stupid things she could have done with it he spoke to himself. Hashirama looked at him confused. Exactly how could she have died from your blood he asked. Well as you know with civilians and their blood types, if you inject the wrong type it would cause problems, with shinobi with bloodlines however, if the blood isn't compatible with the person, it could kill them if they suffer anything much more that a small cut he explained, making Hashirama's eyes widen. So you mean that she's been in danger of dying since a few days before we left for the mission Hashirama said. Yeah, she's lucky our bloods are compatible, otherwise we'd be having an early funeral for her Naruto said with a sigh. So what shall you do now Hashirama asked him. Naruto sighed. I'll help them train with their new, as for Tsunade having the Rinnegan, I don't know he said, sighing again. You will have to teach her eventually, knowing Tsunade she'll probably try on her own and end up hurting herself Hashirama said. I know, she's a handful when she tries to catch up to me Naruto answered. Well we might as well see how we're going to do this, we've got a long 5 months ahead of us Naruto said. With that the two walked out. 5 months later, Naruto was currently training with the rest of Team 7. Ever since they had received their Naruto, they had pummeled them into the ground with training. He didn't want Orochimaru and Jiraiya to fall behind, so he doubled their training to the point that they collapsed from either chakra exhaustion or their injuries, whichever came first. They had improved dramatically over the past five months, both now bordering S rank. At first Naruto had refused to train Tsune to use her Rinnegan, but after a month of calming himself down he complied. He needed to make sure they were ready for the exams. They may have had skill, but they severely lacked experience. The three were fighting all out against him, and while they could overwhelm him a couple of times, he somehow managed to just get away each time. Come on guys, you were doing great earlier Naruto said. That was, pant, over, pant, three hours ago Jiraiya managed to say between pants. Aw, is Jiraiya-chan getting tired Naruto teased. Well it's not our fault that you're a stamina monster Jiraiya yelled back. Well then would you like to go a little longer, I'm sure another few hours won't do any harm Naruto said. Jiraiya paled while Orochimaru and Tsune glared at him. Naruto chuckled at the sight. Alright come on, we'll finish up for today, the exams are tomorrow Naruto said. He heard three sighs of relief as soon as he said that. HMPH, and I thought we'd never have to see the academy again Jiraiya said, slightly depressed. Just be glad that we have to be there for 9 and not 8 Orochimaru said chuckling. Just remember to wake up in the morning Tsune teased. Naruto grinned at this. Finally, someone besides me gets it for punctuality he thought happily. Jiraiya stuck his tongue out at her childishly. Well how about this then, if the two of you aren't there an hour early, I'll come and get you myself Tsunade said with a sickly sweet smile. Jiraiya gulped and Orochimaru started to sweat. See you two tomorrow Naruto said, but Orochimaru and Jiraiya had already left. Naruto's forehead had a sweat drop on it. They're really terrified of you he said, turning to Tsunade. Tsunade pouted and said well it's not my fault they're only on time. And it's not their fault you're so early to everything Naruto said chuckling. Tsunade pouted again before regaining a serious look. Digi wants to see me in the morning, he wants you to come with me, a half hour early, I have a feeling that it's not going to be good she said, staring at the ground. Naruto's face hardened as he knew what Hashirama would tell her and felt sad for her. But if she doesn't hear it now, she probably never will he thought. He put on his best fake smile. It's probably nothing, come on, let's go he said. The next morning, Naruto was walking to the academy, his mind set on what would transpire with this little talk Hashirama was going to give Tsunade. The sun was barely rising over the sky, giving it a red tint. He sighed in frustration. She's not going to like this he mumbled to himself. But the burden of one will be held by many he heard a voice in his head say. Doesn't it mean it'll be any easier for her Akira-chan he thought to the bitch. At least she'll get to hear it from him and not his brother Akira assured. Naruto sighed. You always have something to add don't you he thought to her. But of course Naruto cut Akira teased. Naruto looked up as he found himself looking at Tsunade looking worried outside the academy with her grandfather. Hashirama looked at Naruto and Naruto immediately knew why he would be needed. He wasn't just going to tell her about him, he was going to tell her everything. Hashirama sighed. Good morning Naruto he said, causing Tsunade to look up, whatever news her grandfather had to tell her was going to end in tears, and she knew it. Hashirama sighed once again. Tsunade, you may or may not know, but we are on the brink of a war between the shinobi nations he started. Tsunade nodded, signaling for him to continue as Naruto stood beside her. I'm afraid to tell you this, but I'm not going to live to see the end of it he said with tears in his eyes. 
At first Sune didn't react, so he took the opportunity to continue. Whether it be from battle or old age, I'm going to die before this war is over, Tabarama won't be far behind either he said, kneeling down to her height. By now Tsunade's eyes were threatening to overflow with tears. I'm telling you this because I don't want you to get depressed, I don't want you to become that kind of person, just because of my death he said hugging her. Tsunade was now openly crying as her grandfather hugged her, Naruto had also come to her side and squeezed her hand. Whether I die sooner or later doesn't matter, I will die before the bloodshed of war ends, please Tsunade-chan, stay strong, I know that my death shall affect you greatly, but you still have many people to look after you, you have your mother, Sari-chan, Naruto-kun the most of all, you'll never truly be alone, Tsunade-chan Hashirama whispered into his granddaughter's ear so only she could hear. That was it for Tsunade as the floodgates were opened. Her tears had covered the shoulder of her grandfather by now, it was only when he explained to her what she would have left after he died, did she start to calm down, though not by much. Naruto frowned as he wondered why Hashirama had chosen this day to tell her. Then his eyes widened. So you really are that close he thought looking at him sadly. Hashirama whispered once more only this time Tsunade had barely heard it. Both I and your botchan know how much you like Naruto-kun, he will help you through everything, you don't need to worry. Tsunade had stopped crying and smiled slightly, but blushed even more. Now, I believe you have an exam to get to Hashirama said standing up. It was only now that both he and Naruto realized Tsunade was holding Naruto's hand, even though he had let go. Tsunade and Naruto slowly made their way into the academy. Um Tsunade-chan, would you mind letting go of my hand Naruto asked awkwardly. Tsunade blushed even more when she realized she was still holding his hand and let go. Naruto smiled and put his hand on her shoulder. Come on, otherwise we'll be late as soon as he said this Tsunade grabbed his hand again and rushed to their room. Naruto smiled even more at this. Well that's one problem solved he thought as they arrived outside the room. Things will only get worse from here, she might as well enjoy herself he thought as they arrived outside the exam room door. Naruto looked up as he saw the first team arrive at the exam room. Jiraiya and Orochimaru had gotten here about a half hour ago, both running for fear of Tsunade killing them. To say they were annoyed she wasn't even paying attention was an understatement because it meant that they could have stayed in bed longer. Naruto tensed as he saw that the team that entered were glaring at him and his team. Back in this time, it wasn't uncommon to have young children in the Chikmin exams, as it usually meant that they were strong, depending on how old they were, so to see five and six-year-olds in the Chikmin exams would make anyone wary. Naruto took note of their eight. They're from Kumo he thought warily as they seemed to be whispering to each other. What are they talking about Tsunade whispered, not looking towards them. I don't know, that's what worries me Naruto answered. He looked to his left to see Orochimaru and Jiraiya trying to pass the time. The door opened and another two teams came in. The team from Kumo released Kai to try and intimidate the teams, but Naruto just released his own and made the Kumo team collapse to their knees, except for the girl, about Tsunade's age, who was sweating, but other than that she didn't seem phased. The other two teams seemed to look at him thankfully, but then stared at him in slight fear, as though they had realized who he was. Naruto saw that their eight was for Kiri, he could only imagine the stories of the Battle of Wave that they had heard. He stifled a chuckle as he realized that they were scared of a six-year-old, talk about paranoid, even if it was him. Within an hour the room was packed with at least 50 teams from all over the shinobi nations, and each village had their own reactions to seeing him. Gumo glared, Kiri gave him the odd glance, and seemed to be slightly trembling, Iwa and Suna were making sure they kept an eye on them, and other than Taki, who stared in awe, any other team from the minor villages, looked about ready to piss themselves. He shifted his eyes to the left, and Tsunade seemed to be meditating to try and get away from the stars, even if there was some chatter among the other teams. Jiraiya was reading, which surprised Naruto, while Orochimaru had taken out a leaf to practice his chakra control. The large man walked into the classroom. Everyone, sit down now and shut up he said, even though there were only whispers through the room. Everyone sat down, some still glared at him. Each of you will be given a sheet of paper, do not turn it over until I say so he said as five Chikmin started handing out the pieces of paper. Naruto could see that Tsunade had as clear a view of him as he did her. Jiraiya and Orochimaru were sitting a few seats behind him and could see him and Tsunade clearly. He smirked. Looks like teaching the Manbu code paid off he thought. While the Chiknin give the tests out I will explain a few rules, first off, if you're caught cheating 5 times you and your team are out of the exams, there are also 9 questions on the sheet, I'll give you the last one at the end, each person starts out with 10 points, for each question they get wrong 2 points are deducted, and to pass your team needs the same amount of points as it has people, any questions he said. No one put their hands up. No, then you may begin, you have 1 hour, he said. The sound of paper crinkling was heard through the classroom as well as a few gulps. Naruto smirked as he answered the first question and made a series of hand signs to his team. Team 3 of Suna, leave now one of the Chiknin said. Three signs were heard as the first team left. 
A few more gulps were heard, not 30 seconds in and the first team was sent out. Naruto smirked as he continued to answer the questions before sending a code to his teammates. He heard the rhythm of a pencil bouncing off a desk and sighed as he repeated one of the codes. Probably Jiraiya he thought. By the time he had finished there was only 10 minutes gone. He turned his page over so any other idiot didn't try to copy his answers. Team 5 of Kiri and Team 8 of Taki are to leave now another Chikmin said. Everyone is too cautious, nearly no one is actually trying to cheat he thought, looking around with his eyes as he leaned back. He saw that Tsunade had done the same and felt several eyes on the both of them. Deciding it was too much of an effort to wait until the 50 minutes were up, he went to his mindscape. Naruto's mindscape. Naruto opened his eyes and found himself near the center of the Kanoha inside his head as an 18-year-old. People were all walking around, minding their own business and a few waved at him. Naruto-kun, what are you doing here? Akira asked. The Chikmin exams were way too easy this time, there's still 50 minutes left, you seem to be enjoying yourself he said, noticing the bottle of sake in her hand. Everything in here is real you know, the people are just what you remember of them, but they act exactly like they do in real life, almost like you made a copy of them without knowing the details. The human mind really is a wondrous thing Akira said, while looking up to the three-faced Hokage Mountain. Naruto's mouth was slightly agape. The people here were the same as the ones he remembered seeing in real life, and his mind had created carbon copies in both appearance and personality, without knowing the latter, it blew his mind because he basically had a mini village in his head. So what are you going to be teaching Tsunade, with a Rinnegan I mean Akira asked. She shouldn't even have the damn thing, she's lucky to be alive Naruto said. Doesn't mean that she shouldn't be trained to use it now that she does have it Akira said. I'll show her how to use a few of the weaker techniques, even if they're still powerful to the point of being a god Naruto said with a sigh. Akira chuckled. Oh come on Naruto-kun, she's already convincing you to train her, she just doesn't want to be as helpless as she was when you first saved her Akira said. Naruto sighed. I know that, but her childishness will get her killed if she's not careful, and I speak from experience Naruto said. Akira looked at Naruto sadly as she knew what he said was true, and added his continuous worry for her, it was heart-wrenching for her to see him worry about the girl. Don't worry Naruto-kun, she'll be alright she whispered as she pulled him into a hug. Naruto smiled at this. Since meeting her, Akira had become more like a caring older sister figure to him, and he had even grown to love her like so, though he managed to keep it hidden from her. Akira held him tightly for a few moments before letting go. You had better get back soon Naruto-kun, there's only 5 minutes left for the test Akira said. That was fast Naruto said. Well, time isn't always what it seems in your mindscape, you wanted at least 40 minutes to go by when you came here, that's exactly what has happened Akira said. Goodbye Naruto-kun she said before Naruto's vision of her went black. The real world, Naruto opened his eyes and looked around him. There were probably only 30 teams left from the original 50. He saw that Tsunade was trying to entertain herself by playing with her pencil, Jiraiya's head was against the desk as he let out a light snore every now and then, and Arachimaru, who had put a hand over himself, was reading a book that Naruto couldn't identify. Pencils down the main proctor said. Before I give you the last question, there are a few rules to tell you he said, gaining a few groans from the genin. Firstly if you don't want to take the question you can leave, but if you do take it and get it wrong, you are banned from taking the Chiknin exams for four years as, he said with a smirk, as nearly the whole room started shouting in complaint. His smirk faded when he noticed Naruto and his team weren't even phased by this. After quieting them down, teams began to pour out until there were only 17 teams left. He waited for a few moments to see if anyone else would get up before speaking up again. If no one else wants to leave you all pass he said. As he explained what a Chiknin was expected to do, the faces of the remaining team cells were bright and, well, happy. The proctor looked at Naruto and saw him smirk. So the kid figured it out, not bad he thought. Before you move on to the next exam, I might as well explain one more thing, the way that you cheated, they were easily detected, I only saw 5 people cheating in a way that wouldn't be detectable in battle, you should think about improving, it he said before leaving as another man entered. Hello everyone, meet me at training ground 44 in 20 minutes, and I shall explain there the man said before leaving. Naruto smirked at hearing training ground 44. What's up with you Jiraiya asked. Training ground 44, better known as the forest of death Naruto, replied just loud enough for a few other genin to hear. Jiraiya paled. You're just saying that to scare the other teams right he asked. No was Naruto's reply. Training ground 44 Aka forest of death The remaining teams had arrived at training ground 44. They looked slightly shaken from what they saw. Besides Team 7, excluding Jiraiya, the only person that wasn't intimidated was the girl from the Kumo team. Alright listen up, you're going to get a scroll, half will get a heaven scroll, the other half will get an earth scroll. You have 5 days to take a scroll from another team and make it to the tower he said, pointing towards a tower a couple of kilometers away. 
you will be given a number, and your team is to go to the gate with the same number, there you shall receive your scroll, any questions he said. When no one put their hand up he started handing out pieces of paper. Naruto unfolded his piece. Number 3 he said to his teammates. Team 7 then proceeded to walk towards gate 3, and when they got there, there was a tall, lanky man standing next to a table. Before I give you your scroll, sign here, it's a warrant saying that we are not responsible for any injuries or fatalities that might occur he said. Team 7 signed it, though Jiraiya was slightly hesitant. After they received the earth scroll they were told to go straight in. They ran for roughly 5 minutes before stopping in the clearing. Now, how are we going to do this Tsunade asked. This forest is 8 miles long, the other teams could be anywhere Rachimaru said. So how do we find them Jiraiya asked. We don't, they've already found us Naruto said before throwing a shuriken towards a tree. The tree seemed to rustle just before the shuriken hit it. HMPH, the kids are good an excited voice said. But not good enough another deeper voice said. A few shuriken burst from the trees. And Naruto caught it. Heh, so he's not that good is he, he doesn't even look scared, he looks almost bored at deep, but level voice called out. Naruto threw the fuma shuriken to his left. Haha, he nearly got me, the excited boy said. Alright I have had enough of this Naruto thought. Katen. Nkamakyaku he said, and a giant wall of flames destroyed most of the trees in the clearing. Holy, shit that was close the excited voice yelled. Let's move in, he's bound to be tired after that the level voice said. Through the smoke, Naruto could see three silhouettes. Naruto gestured for his team to hide. Heh, looks like your team has abandoned you kid the deep voice said as the team's appearance became clear. The deep voice came from a big bulky guy who looked about 13. It just means easy pickings for us is the excited voice, a guy who was hunched over slightly and dressed eerily like Naruto did in his original timeline said. Naruto withdrew one of his swords. What, too afraid to speak, kid the bulky boy said. Naruto remained silent. He saw the level-headed boy reach into his pouch and threw a kunai at him. Naruto burst into a flock of crows. What the hell was that the hunched boy asked. Jinjutsu the level-headed boy said. HMPH, I'm surprised you figured it out, you're the first that figured it out, and still lives Naruto said, his voice ringing through the air. I'll just have to change that Naruto continued. The hunched boy fell to the ground with a sword lodged in his throat. Hey, come out and fight the coward the big bulky kid said. Naruto suddenly appeared in front of him and used the inhuman strength that Tsunade taught him to send the boy flying. The level-headed boy turned to attack him but made one small but fatal mistake. He looked into Naruto's eyes. Tsukiyomi Naruto said. A few seconds later the boy fell to the ground screaming and slit his own throat. Naruto sighed as he deactivated his Manjikum Rinnegan. He bent down and picked up the boy's scroll and just his luck, a heaven scroll. Alright guys, you can come down now he said as he sheathed his sword. Team 7 then continued their way towards the Chikmin Tower, meeting a couple of more arrogant teams along the way. There was just one downside to getting there early. Waiting for everyone else. Five days later, after five days of waiting, the other teams had finally arrived. Naruto didn't let his team just lie around and created two blood clones. He had them train Jiraiya and Orochimaru while he trained Tsunade. To say that they were tired would be an understatement, so Naruto decided to give them a break every couple of hours. When the second exam was officially over, Team 7 made their way to the arena. Naruto could see that there were only eight teams left, which only consisted of teams from the major villages. Up on the balcony, Hiruzen Saratobi stepped up to make an announcement. Welcome all, you have survived the second test, but now is where the challenge is, the Chknin exams are not just for graduating to the next level, but are also to improve a village's prestige with the daimyos and other nations, the better your performance in the final stage, the more clients your village gets as well as any potential enemies giving a second thought to attacking he explained to the genin. However, I'm afraid to tell you that there are too many of you here, therefore, we must hold these preliminaries to narrow down the numbers, if anyone wishes to drop out can do so now, as your choice no longer affects your teammates Hiruzen said. Several people dropped out, until there were only 20 people left. Now that no one else is going to drop out, we can begin he said. A woman stepped out from behind him and jumped down to the arena floor. Hello, my name is Keiko and I am your proctor for the third exam. The first match will be Kindo of Kumo versus Masahiko of Suna, everyone else goes up to the balcony Keiko said. Ready, Hajim she said before jumping back up to the balcony. How about you just give up and I'll treat you to something you'll really enjoy Masahiko said with a smirk. Why, because you're afraid to lose Kindo said in a stoic tone. Masahiko, in his arrogance, snarled and said, I'll show you, which. He charged her at Chknin level speeds. Naruto smirked as he realized just who the girl was. The reason that she didn't drop from his kai. This girl was Kimdo no Enten, the girl who created the Blaze release which led to her being the third Kanoichi to reach S rank in the book, as most others were either killed, settled into family life, or didn't go past mid-air rank. 
He knew that this fight was already over when Masahiko charged at her. Kindo drew a kunai and plunged it into Masahiko's heart at such speeds that only Team 7, the Jinin present and Sirotobi could see. Winner, Kindo Keiko said. Hushitsunade asked him. That Tsunade-chan is Kindo, a little rumor going around is that she is quite the expert at nature transformation, she even created the Anton Naruto said. I've never heard of it Tsunade said. It's a combination of Raiden and Kaden nature affinities Naruto explained to her. Amazing Tsunade said. Naruto smirked. She's still in Kumo and she hasn't changed her name yet, she's even born earlier, let's see what you got this time round, Pakura he thought looking down at the green brown haired girl. Next match, Jiraiya of Konoha vs Iwa of Iwa Keiko said. Jiraiya jumped down and was met with an intimidating boy who looked to be in his late teens. Heh, this'll be easy, Pickings Iwa said. Jiraiya gulped and fell into a tojutsu stance. Ready, Hajim Keiko said. Iwa charged Jiraiya with kunai in hand. Jiraiya barely had time to jump out of the way. Damn it, get back here Iwa said. Jiraiya instead took out a kunai with a tag at the end and threw it at him. It blew up when Iwa caught it. When the smoke cleared, Iwa was covered in oil. You, little, shit Iwa said with visible rage. Jiraiya rubbed the back of his head. Oops, wrong tag he said, chuckling nervously. I'm going to kill you for that Iwa shouted at the top of his lungs as he charged Jiraiya, ready to take his head off. Jiraiya jumped to the side just before he was hit and threw another tag at Iwa, igniting him on fire. Iwa screamed in pain as he gave up and was put out by Keiko. Winner, Jiraiya she said after giving Iwa to a couple of medical nin. Naruto looked at Jiraiya as he stood next to them once more. You deceptive idiot he said, chuckling to himself. Jiraiya rubbed the back of his head and chuckled slightly. Next match, Orochimaru of Konoha vs Tatsumaka Minori of Konoha Keiko said. Proctor-san, I concede, I'm not strong enough to fight, Orochimaru Minori said, as soon as Keiko said her name. Keiko nodded. Winner by default, Orochimaru she said. Lucky team Jiraiya said to Orochimaru. Next match, Senju Tsunade of Konoha vs Hayugarayu of Konoha Keiko said. When Tsunade jumped down, she was met with a glare that could pierce the soul, as Ryu had already activated his Byakugan. Ready, Hajim Keiko said as she jumped back. Not a second later, Tsunade brought her hand up to her face as she blocked a strike that would have hit her right between her eyes. She jumped back to avoid being hit, but Ryu kept coming as he hit both her arms in several different places before jumping back. When Tsunade tried to move her arms, she found she couldn't, but before she could channel Kaiubi's chakra to them, Ryu laughed. I've hit the points in your arm, they are now useless to you now, just give up he said with a grin that screamed of arrogance. Tsunade smirked as she channeled Kaiubi's chakra to her arms. Ryu's face suddenly turned to confusion, and then to horror as Tsunade moved her arms with ease. That's not exactly the hardest problem to solve, but just to take your stupid pride down, I won't use my arm she said as she put her arms behind her back. Ryu smirked at her seemingly stupid decision. Tsunade channeled chakra to her legs and jumped as high as the balcony, before coming down to the ground with her inhuman strength. Ryu barely had time to jump away, and when he did, he got hit by the debris from the crater that Tsunade had made with her foot. Almost everyone was shocked by the pure and raw power behind the destruction of the floor to the chakra that was visibly surrounding her leg. When the dust cleared Ryu was unconscious with a large stone next to him. Heiko jumped down from the balcony, still in shock at what she had just witnessed. Winner, T.S. Tsunade she said, stuttering slightly. Tsunade jumped back up to the balcony and stood next to Naruto, who was holding his temples and silently laughing. Next match, Ichiha Masaru of Konoha vs Kutamaru of Kiri, Keiko said. Ready, Hajim, Keiko said. Masaru activated his Sharingan, and three Tomo could be seen in each eye as he charged Kitamaru. They locked themselves in a Tajutsu battle and stayed locked in it for several minutes, before Masaru gained the upper hand and managed to catch Kitamaru on the chin. Winner, Ichiha Masaru, Keiko said. After a half hour Naruto was the only genin from Konoha who still hadn't fought, and the person he was fighting shocked him greatly. The final fight will be Uzumaki Naruto of Konoha vs. Gari of Iwa, Keiko said. Bakuten no Gari, one of the most revered men in his time, was now before him. Ready, Hajim, Keiko said. Gari and Naruto didn't move for a second, seemingly studying each other before the two ran at each other. Naruto knew that he couldn't get too close as he would have to show his speed, so instead he settled for mid-range combat. Dawn. Kami Arashi Naruto said as he forced a wind strong enough to stop Gari and make his sight on him go blurry. Naruto took this chance to cast two before making another set of hand signs. Suiten. Hahanraki said and a small torrent of water was launched from his hand. Doten. Kukagari said, and just before he was hit, a mass of earth burst up and covered his body. The earth dispersed from his body, and he was panting slightly. Naruto grinned slightly. At first Gari was confused. His eyes then widened. Too late a voice behind him said. Gari turned around, only to be punched in the face. 
On the ground, he looked to where Naruto was before he turned around, the Naruto that was there began to disappear in a distortion of the air around him. In a desperate attempt to get away, Gari threw an explosive tag at Naruto, who didn't even move as the tag blew up. At first Gari was confused as to why Naruto didn't move, but when he felt metal against his throat, he knew what had happened. A double illusion he whispered. Correct, now concede Naruto whispered back. When Gari conceded and Keiko announced his victory, most of the remaining Iwa Genin were looking on in shock. That was fun Naruto said to himself as he went back up to the balcony. He could feel the stares on him and inwardly smirked while keeping a stoic look. Keiko then nodded to a pair of chiknin who came down holding a box. Alright everyone listen up, each of you will come down here, one at a time, and pick a number from the box, show it to me, and I shall tell you what match number you'll be fighting in, don't ask me who your opponent is, because I won't tell you she said. First up is Yuzumaki Naruto Keiko said. Naruto sighed and jumped back down. He picked out a number and showed it to Keiko. Match 1 she whispered into his ear. This process continued till no one was left. Now that everyone has their matches, you have one month to train for the next exam, goodbye Hiruzen said. When everyone left and Team 7 were out of range of the other genin, Jiraiya turned to Naruto. If we already have to fight others, how will we fight the genin he asked. Naruto looked at him. Only one way to do it, finish our fights quickly enough so we are ready, but slowly enough to entertain the daimyo Naruto said. Naruto woke up in a daze. He stumbled out of his bed and managed to make his way to the door. As soon as he opened the door, he was greeted with the sound of loud crying. It had become a regularity in the last few months as the twins started to get fussy. He thought of the pure luck at the fact that Tsukiko had named her daughter Amaterasu, and yet he could already tell that the girl had an extremely high affinity for fire. Tsukiko had been depressed lately as her partner, Akihiro, had been announced as Kia after a mission went wrong, and let's just say that his body wasn't something to look at when it arrived. Itsuro on the other hand gained a strong affinity for Earth. The twins' affinities had started to reflect their personalities in very few but noticeable ways. Kitsuro was always hurting himself when he tried to walk, but never even seemed phased as he got back up and stubbornly repeated the process. The Madarasu on the other hand had a more happy-go-lucky personality and always tried to think about it before doing it, even if it was only placing blocks and holes. Even with all of this, Naruto still didn't know of Anko having an aunt or uncle and simply thought that something happened to one of them. Tsukiko seemed more tired lately, between working with her children and her job, it must have put a lot of stress on the woman. Naruto didn't like to say it aloud, but he worried for her. The woman was running herself into the ground and she didn't have too much to show for it. Good morning Naruto Tsukiko said, trying to hide her depression. Naruto sighed. You're not very good at hiding your emotions he told her. Tsukiko frowned. You need to take a break before you kill yourself from working, take a holiday, the hospital is likely to understand he said as he got himself cereal. I'm not overworking myself Tsukiko said in denial. Naruto looked her straight in the eye. Yes, you are, it shows so much that I heard a few nurses that I know you don't know, talking about it, you can't do everything he said to her softly. Tsukiko looked ready to let the floodgates go as she started to shake. Well I can't, okay, with Akihiro here I was earning enough to keep my children going, now that he's dead, I have to work double time just to stay alive for the month, just to be able to support my kids she said with an angry sigh, as tears ran down her face and onto the floor. Naruto felt his heart wrench. He disappeared from the room for a minute, returning fully dressed and holding a scroll. If money's the problem, I have more than enough to help you he said, glad that he had taken a few solo s rank missions, but a bit saddened that he hadn't used it earlier. He channeled his chakra into one of the seals on the scroll, and four huge pouches came out. There, four million ryo, enough to keep you going for half a year he said to the shock of Tsukiko. Now, any other excuses for not taking holidays that I can't solve Naruto said, smiling at his surrogate sister. As soon as he finished he was enveloped in a bone-crushing hug from Tsukiko, who was crying into his shoulder, muttering thank you over and over. Naruto was a little, bewildered to say the least, and just hugged her back, not knowing what else to do. After five minutes of just hugging him, Tsukiko let go. Her eyes were red and puffy, and she was sniffling slightly. Well I gotta go, see you later Tsukiko-ni he said smiling. He left, leaving Tsukiko with a shocked look on her face. She then smiled. Tsukiko ni, I could get used to that she said to herself before sighing as she heard the twins crying. But Naruto, Naruto was walking towards Tsunade's house smiling. His surrogate sister was finally taking a break, and this meant she would grow happier. He had told Tsunade, before the exams, that he would be coming over to her clan's compound to train her today. Her clan compound, while large, only held six people, Hashirama, Tabarama, Tsunade's mother Mariko, Mido, Tsunade herself and the Waki. He had wondered what Mido and Mariko would be like when he first heard Tsune talking about them during one of her training sessions. He was so caught up in his thoughts that he never realized he had arrived at the Senju compound. 
Good morning Naruto Hashirama said, making Naruto come out of his thoughts. Oh, good morning Naruto said, mildly surprised to see the man outside his office. Tsunade's in the training ground with Mito-chan Hashirama said before continuing his business. Naruto nodded and went toward the training ground to see Mito teaching Tsunade about Kenjutsu. Good morning, you must be Naruto Mito said, not looking up from the seal Tsunade was intently trying to draw. But trying being the important word as not a second later she went flying back from a failed explosive tag. Naruto chuckled slightly at the sight. Damn it, what the hell am I doing wrong Tsunade said in frustration. Naruto looked at the seal she was trying to draw, and the paper she was using laughed. Tsunade chan, it might help to release the seal you're drawing he said, still laughing. Tsunade looked confused, but when she looked at the paper itself instead of the brush, she blushed at how weak it was. She looked up to her grandmother with a pout. Mito was smiling at her and chuckling. That's not fair Tsunade said, her pout grown larger. Of course it's fair Tsunade chan, it's not my fault you were too enthusiastic about learning Kenjutsu Mito said. Mito then turned to Naruto. Well Naruto, I hear from Hashi-kun that you aren't too bad at Kenjutsu she said. And Yuzumaki level 6 Naruto said. Impressive Mito said, genuinely surprised. Tsunade on the other hand was confused, thus Mito decided to explain. Yuzumaki levels are different to normal levels when it comes to Fkenjutsu, Naruto being a level 6 on Yuzumaki terms would make him go higher than a level 10 under normal terms, one Yuzumaki level is at least 3 normal levels, well beyond level 10 the elderly woman said. The look on Tsunade's face almost made Naruto laugh. Well Tsunade-chan I'm afraid that's all I can give you for today, plus I'm sure Naruto-kun has something to teach, Yumito said with a smile on her face as she left. Naruto looked at the woman strangely as she left, it was almost as if she knew. Naruto turned back to Tsunade. Why don't we get started he said to her. What are we doing Tsunade asked. Oh, you'll see Naruto said with a mischievous smirk on his face. Nearly one month later, Naruto was smirking as Tsunade fell over for the millionth time this month. He had increased her weights to 600 pounds, gradually of course, per limb. She could barely keep herself up without falling after a few hours of fighting. Unbeknownst to her, he had sent two blood clones to do the same with Ureya and Rachimaru, the only difference being they had 500 pounds. What was even worse, in Tsunade's case anyway, was that he made her spar him with the weights on. He hadn't told the three, but as soon as they came back from wave country, he had slowly increased his weights to 750 pounds, and now was able to hold himself upright and still go about his daily life. Most would say that they were ruining their bodies and stunting their growth, but he had put special seals on the weights to prevent this from happening. The seals were of his own design, and were the reason he was a level 6 in Yuzumaki Kenjutsu. He had always made sure to keep an eye on the date. While there were some events that he would not be allowed to prevent, such as the massacre of the Yuzumaki clan, he could prevent other things like Nawaki's death, he just had to be on time for them. He dodged one of Tsunade's punches and tripped her up again. Kami damn it, stop doing that, Tsunade shouted at him from the ground. Naruto was just glad that she was too tired to get up again. We're done for the day, you won't be able to get up, again he said as Tsunade made futile attempts to stand up. You lasted 3 hours before you grew fatigued enough to beat easily, as long as our fight doesn't go on for that ridiculous amount of time, we'll be alright Naruto said as he helped her up and put one of her arms around his neck. You're a damn slave driver, Tsunade said. And you're a whiny brat, you want personal training and when you get it, you want to stop, Naruto retorted. I'm just wondering how Jiraiya and Orochimaru are going to feel about this as Tsunade muttered as Naruto put her down on her now Mokuten wood reinforced bed. You don't really think I'd leave them all for you, they've been going through the same training you have for the past month, just more to their own abilities Naruto said as he started helping Kurama heal Tsunade. Tsunade had started visiting the fox more and more often, and now she was as close to the fox as he was to him in his time. Granted that Kurama was more of a brother to her now, he still didn't show it too much, still messing with her chakra during her training. There, that should do it Naruto said as he lifted Tsunade back off her bed. Why the hell are you doing this to us, what the hell did we do Tsunade asked as she readjusted herself to her weights. Now that my dear Tsu-chan, is a secret Naruto said with a smile as Tsunade blushed at the nickname. Well I had better go, good night Naruto said. Tsunade looked at him in shock before looking out the window and seeing the sun had nearly set. I only said that you'd go three hours before getting fatigued, we were fighting for twice as long Naruto said before leaving. Tsunade, still in shock, never noticed her grandmother enter her room. He'll be the one for her Mito thought before leaving her granddaughter to her thoughts. The day of the Chiknin exam finals, Naruto got up and got dressed in a rush. He was hoping to get to the arena early to see Hashirama. As soon as he got outside his bedroom door, the screaming of his surrogate nephew could be heard throughout the house. 
he made his way downstairs to see Tsukiko, looking better than she had since he first came here, holding Katsuro as she fed him. Katsuro had purple hair with blonde tints at the very end, and even though it was hard to see since he was still so young, Naruto could see that he was the spitting image of Akihiro. Amaterasu on the other hand was the spitting image of her mother, just with purple hair. The twins were almost complete opposites when it came to how they acted. Katsuro was your average loud and noisy child, while Amaterasu was a quiet and loving child. Naruto could only think that since they had been able to walk without support, they had become almost polar opposites, all within a month. Amaterasu almost reminded him of Hinata and how shy she could act, but when she wanted to, she could act like he had in his childhood, which scared him a bit. He had become very attached to Amaterasu in the last month, and the little girl loved every second of the attention she got from him. Good morning Naruto Tsukiko said. The girl hadn't looked better in months. Morning, can't stop, Gotaru Naruto said as he grabbed a slice of toast from Tsukiko's plate. Tsukiko chuckled as she put down Katsuro and started feeding Amaterasu. Naruto was sprinting down to the arena by the rooftop. He could see Hashirama in the distance, talking to someone. The closer he got to the two, the more dread he felt flow through him. The man he was talking to wasn't of any interest right now, but Naruto knew he had seen his face before, he just didn't know where. Good morning Hashirama sensei Naruto said as he got within hearing distance. Both men turned to look at him. You're here early Naruto-kun, is there something you need Hashirama said, surprised to see Naruto earlier than Tsunade. Yes, but I can wait Naruto said, gesturing towards the man Hashirama was with. No that's alright, we're just finishing up, go to the cage box, and I'll meet you there Hashirama said. Naruto did as instructed and waited only for a few moments before Hashirama arrived. Well, what do you want to talk about Hashirama asked him. I would like to know how we're going to work the fights out, we don't know who our first opponents are, and we might be the unlucky ones to even go up against each other Naruto said. Well the daimyo would understand you giving up on fighting a teammate, I understand what you're saying, this is why I have decided to change it up a bit, because there are so many strong fighters, we would be wasting the daimyo's time to go all the way through, therefore you are only going to have one-on-one -on -one matchups instead of the tournament Hashirama said. Naruto nodded before making his way down to the competitor's room. When he got there, he could see Tsunade was already there with Jiraiya and Rachimaru. Jiraiya was on the ground with a bloody and broken nose, Tsunade had her hand poised to hit him, and Arachimaru just stood there and laughed. Just as Tsunade was about to hit Jiraiya again, Naruto cleared his throat. The three looked at him. We don't need the other teams to think we fight, fix his nose and get him cleaned up before the other competitors, arrived Naruto said sternly. Jiraiya looked like he was praying thanks to Naruto for saving him, until Tsunade forced his nose back into place, to which he let out a cry of agony. Tsunade was smiling when he looked up. She handed him a piece of cloth which he held to his nose while grumbling. I've been talking to Hashirama just now and due to the amount of good fighters, we'll only have to fight one single match, and then our special match for the daimyos Naruto told them. Jiraiya seemed relieved at this as did Orochimaru, but Tsunade still looked slightly worried. Naruto was about to say something, but then the competitors started arriving, so he kept his mouth shut. He could see that Kimdo was staring at him with interest as she kept her eyes glued to him. Soon enough, the room was filled with what was left of the original teams from the Chikin exams, and the sounds of people in the stands high up above could be heard, even though they only seemed to be talking. Naruto looked up to see Keiko walk in. Alright everyone, follow me she said. As soon as they got out, the crowd started to cheer loudly. Welcome everyone, we are here to judge the brightest and strongest that the hidden villages have to offer. We shall have five one-on-one -on -one fights, and then due to the request of the Lightning Daimyo, a special fight between the best genin that Kanoha has to offer versus three of Kumo's most experienced genin who have even fought. Now without further ado, let the exams begin Hashirama said, receiving a loud round of applause. Beside Hashirama was another throne-like seat, and in it was a man Naruto recognized easily. It was the Sandane Rakage, and he was looking at Naruto with pure malice. Welcome Rakage Dono Hashirama said. Please Hashirama Dono, call me the Rakage said with his usual snarl. Tell me, for what reason have you ordered the match you have Hashirama asked as he sat down. I have not, the lightning daimyo wanted the match, well the boy may have beaten me, I'm not as arrogant to think that there is something I could do to kill him or his teammate so easily said as his snarl grew large. Hashirama eyed the man for a few seconds before turning back to the arena. Keiko stepped out to face Genin. Match 1 will be Kindo of Kumo vs. Uzumaki Naruto of Konoha, everyone else is to make their way back to the balcony Keiko said. Naruto was surprised that he would be facing the girl who would eventually become the strongest Kanoichi that Suna ever had, but he was too focused on the later fight to care. Ready, Hajim Keiko said. Almost immediately a loud clash was heard as in the blink of an eye, both Naruto and Kimdo were in the center, each with a kunai in hand. Naruto, thanks to his weight training, quickly overpowered Kimdo. Kimdo jumped back just before Naruto pushed her to the ground. 
She tried to charge him again, but this time put him on. Naruto dispersed almost immediately and brought the kunai up again. Kindo barely had time to jump back before Naruto drew one of his katana and tried to slash her head off. She didn't get away unscarred as Naruto managed to graze her chin. Kindo put her hand to her chin and found that the blood was coming out with ease, but still not taking her eyes off of Naruto. Naruto sheathed his katana and smirked. It was then that Kindo noticed that a strange looking kunai, with three prongs like a sai and a strange seal on it, drove into her jacket just enough to stay in place. She looked back up to see Naruto disappear in a yellow flash and immediately reappear in front of her and drive a bowl of chakra into her. Naruto used the Horation and then drove a Rasengan right into her stomach. It took a second for the crowd to realize what happened, and when they did, they burst into cheers. Naruto disappeared in another yellow flash, and the flash could be seen in the cloud of dust created from Kindo slamming into the wall. When the dust cleared, Kindo was being held with one katana at her throat and another facing the back of her head. Begrudgingly, she conceded. Winner, Yuzumaki Naruto Keiko said. He's gotten better in the past few months, Hashirama said. The boy isn't using his dejutsu, Y asked curiously. Because, if he gets caught in a situation that renders his eyes useless, which is really difficult, he's useless, he just doesn't want to become dependent on them, and it is apparently limited to a timer for each technique Hashirama said. Gave a knowing look and turned back to the arena. Next match, Ichiha Masaro of Konoha vs Hideki of Iowa Keiko said. Masaro jumped down from the balcony, his face forming an unusual stoic look, which made Naruto wonder what he was thinking. Ready, Hajim, Keiko said. Masaro went through a series of hand seals at Jinin level speeds. Kaden. Mirka no he said. Doten. Dorkeki, Hideki said. Much to everyone's surprise, Masaro's burst through the earth wall and hit Hideki straight on. Winner, Masaro, someone get the paramedics here, Keiko said. Brutal Jiraiya said. The scowl on Masaro's face was a worrying one, and Naruto made a note to check on it later. The next match will be Jiraiya of Konoha vs Hitomi of Suna Keiko said. Jiraiya slumped as he walked down the steps. Ready, Hajim Keiko said. Hitomi took out a kunai and threw it at Jiraiya, who easily caught it. Naruto had found out that Hitomi was one of the weakest competitors left, and Jiraiya had managed to get the same info he did, only in half the time. Hari. Jaizo Jiraiya said and his hair sprang out and launched thousands of hairs at the girl. The girl fell to the ground as a hair managed to strike her neck and knock her out. Winner, Jiraiya Keiko said. As the medics took Hitomi's hair-covered body, she called out the next match. Next match, Hirachimaru of Konoha vs Ao of Taki she said. Hirachimaru smirked as he jumped down. He had been storing his chakra and special seals in his hands. He wasn't on Naruto's level, but he knew all he needed. The seals would activate if he ran out of chakra, in which his chakra would create a small burst, large enough to give him a boost when he needs it, but small enough to keep his chakra invisible. The chances that he would need it in his first match were unlikely, the chances of needing them in the second fight were great. Ready, Hajim Keiko said. Hirachimaru stood still, his cold and calculating eyes staring at Ao in an attempt to intimidate the elder boy. Sure enough it worked as Ao's forehead started sweating. Hirachimaru took this opportunity to rush the boy, hidden in his right hand, and in his left was a kunai, clearly visible. He attempted to stab Ao with the kunai. Ao had by then regained control over his body and parried the kunai. In midair, Hirachimaru turned around and threw them at Ao's neck. It hit him dead on and he dropped to his knees. Winner, Hirachimaru Keiko said. The crowd cheered, but not very loudly as the fights didn't last very long and were a bit boring. Next match, Senju Tsunade of Konoha vs Rashi of Iwa Keiko said. Naruto's head sprung up at the mention of Rashi. He saw a young boy with fiery red hair. Ready, Hajim Keiko said. Katen. Nkakak no Rashi said. A giant fireball was hurtling towards Tsunade and she wasn't moving. The fireball hit the target. That was too easy Rashi whispered to himself suspiciously. He turned around, kunai in hand, just in time to block a kick from Tsunade, putting a deep gash in her leg. He stared in shock and horror as the wound started to steam as it healed itself. For Tsunade, this steam went unnoticed as she was too used to it by now. They then got locked in a tajutsu spar. For Tsunade, it was just for a bit of fun as she watched Rashi struggle to keep up, even so, she was still impressed he even blocked her kick. She kept attacking him, all while looking bored. Eventually she really did get bored and decided to end it with her new partner Dachimtan. Sushim TM she said, and a long blade formed on her forearm as she got Rashi to the ground and held it to his throat. Rashi sighed. I can see he said. Keiko jumped back down and declared Tsunade the winner. Tsunade looked back up to Naruto and then over to the three Jmin. It's time she fought as the rest of Team 7 and the three Jmin jumped down. It's killer be killed a little voice in the back of her head told her as she gulped. Team 7 were staring down the three Kumo Jinin as they approached the center of the arena. Naruto felt uneasy as he got closer to the Jinin. 
As he got closer, it started to center itself towards Wang Jinin in particular. He had a scar running from his left jaw to the corner of his mouth. His eyes were a dull hazel color, and his hair was tied into a neat, low ponytail, and was black, while his skin tone was light. He could feel a familiar chakra coming from him, but weaker than he remembered. He couldn't quite put his finger on it, but he knew it was bad. The two men beside him looked slightly arrogant, but cautious as well. The first was black and had dark blonde hair, he was also the smallest of the three. The third man however was a mystery as a mask covered his face, but like the first man, Naruto felt like he knew him. There was a sick feeling forming in Naruto's stomach as Keiko introduced them for the match. Ready, Hajim, Keiko shouted, bringing him out of his thoughts. The three men charged Team 7 at speeds that most of the Anbu would have trouble keeping up with. Naruto yelled for Jiraiya and Orochimaru to jump back as he created a clone to fight for them. The three Jinin smirked when they saw the look of shock on Jiraiya and Orochimaru, but frowned at seeing Naruto and Tsunade. Naruto sent signals to Jiraiya and Orochimaru to keep their distance and attack from long range. He then sent a signal to Tsunade and his clone to attack. The six stayed locked in a Tejutsu battle, while Jiraiya and Orochimaru helped from the distance, using every available weapon in their arsenal. At some point, the masked man managed to get a hold of Naruto's clone and tried to stab it with a kunai. He jumped back in surprise, as only fractions of a second later, the clone exploded. Naruto was fighting two of the guys by himself and was doing alright, but Tsunade had already taken off her weights and was using her monster strength, even though Naruto told her she should only use it when she was struggling. Banch and Ten and Naruto yelled. Just before Tsunade was about to be struck down, an invisible force pulled her away. You alright Naruto asked her. Tsunade just nodded. Ureya and Orochimaru jumped down. What do we do, they're way stronger than us, Tsunade said, her worried tone was obvious in her voice. Naruto silently placed a seal on the three. They didn't get time to speak any longer as the Jinin rushed them again. Naruto managed to get away, but his teammates weren't so lucky. The three Jinin knocked the three out and took them hostage. Give up, kid, and we let them live, the masked man said. Naruto smirked and dropped a kunai he took out when he jumped. He then activates the Horatian seal on them. The three Jinin were surprised when the three kids were flushed away and beside their teammate in less than a second. Tsunade got up groggily, and when she realized where she was, she felt relieved. One man smiled and Naruto knew where he knew the man from. He didn't necessarily know the man, but what was inside of him. Hashirama never gave the Bij away to other villages, but there were a few that managed to seal some Bij chakra inside themselves, one way or another. Kinkaku and Ginkaku were perfect examples. This man held chakra from the Nanabi. He also proved he wasn't afraid to show it as his companion stepped back and he entered a five-tailed state. Shit Naruto said as he created three clones to set up a barrier to protect them. Both he and Tsunade then rushed the man, but were forced to jump away as he jumped up to stab them. Damn it, what are you going to do Tsunade said. Naruto then came up with an idea. Throw a kunai at him, maybe he'll gloat Naruto said quietly. Sure enough when she did, he gloated with arrogance. Haha. <laughs> It's no use, no metal can harm me in this form he said as he caught the kunai and made it melt. Naruto smirked and drew his swords. A bold claim, let's see if you can dance as well as you're on your mouth he said. This made the man angry and he attacked Naruto. Naruto brought his swords up to block and the man, expecting them to melt, went straight for them. To his surprise and agony, the swords didn't melt but instead, sliced right through his left hand and bruised his right. Jaya, what kind of, is this he said in between grunts. No, just two swords that can resist the burns of Yaokai Naruto said. Of what the man asked, obviously confused. Naruto let out a light laugh. You don't even know what you're using he said before giving a hearty laugh. Naruto looked at Hashirama who gave a nod of approval. Now that I have permission, I can show you one of my strongest techniques, it's based off of the strongest technique known to man, the Bijgama he said, making the man gulp. I, call you, Bluff he said, starting to feel confident. Naruto started forming a Rasengan in his hand before it shot out into his Rasen Shuriken. Tom. Rasen Shuriken he said before throwing the large spiraling Shuriken. The man was so shocked he only barely got out of the way, the Rasen Shuriken clipping his foot. What happened next was something no one expected. It blew up. When it dissipated, all that was left of the man was his torn headband. The whole audience was shocked at the sheer power Naruto had displayed, in fact the only ones who weren't shocked were Hashirama, Naruto and Tsunade. Naruto ran forward and absorbed the Nanabi's chakra that was left hanging in the air. The other two men rushed down, hoping to catch them off guard, but Naruto just threw a load of Horatian kunai at them. Heh, maybe you should work on your aim kid, you didn't hit us with any of them the masked man said. Wasn't aiming for you he said, charging a Rasengan. He suddenly flushed away and appeared next to the man's partner and shoved the Rasengan into his gut. Before the masked man could do anything, he flashed away again. His eyes widened in realization. Those kunai, they're what you used to use that technique, impressive he said. 
But I have a job to complete he said, making a hand seal. There was an explosion and the masked man ran faster than anyone could see, towards the cage booth. Naruto and Tsunade both had sunshine there. The crowd would have been hysteric, only the explosion released that put them to sleep. When the two got there, they were shocked to see both Hashirama and the Rakage staring him down. Without his mask, which was on the ground, Naruto recognized who it was. Standing there, in all his old glory, was Kakuzu. I am truly sorry Rakage, but my allegiance lies with someone else, you should have known not to trust a Nukunin Kakuzu said sarcastically. Tsunade tried to surprise him by using her strength, but Kakuzu just turned with a kunai ready to kill her. Luckily, for the third time that day, Naruto saved her by using the Horation. You really have to stop trying to kill yourself Naruto said to her. Tsunade just grumbled. Tsunade, go heal Jiraiya and Arachimaru and get them onto the roof Naruto said. Tsunade was confused, but the look on Naruto's face told her he wasn't messing, so she just complied. I have to admit kid, you really surprised me today, but your life is forfeit Kakuzu said before rushing to stab Naruto. He was in shock when he went straight through him, literally. What the hell was that Kakuzu asked in fear. You should know, you've fought Madara enough times to have seen it Naruto said. Kamui Kakuzu whispered. Naruto smirked. Still, it's no use, even as we speak, my allies are attacking and killing the shinobi and civilians, whether you make it out or not, your village will be crippled, heavily Kakuzu said. Hashirama's eyes widened. Shit, this is bad he mumbled to himself. I thought so Naruto said aloud. Oh really, care to share this with the rest of us the rakage said. I'd assume that the lightning daimyo has allied himself with AIM, with you gone, he would have more control over your shinobi, with Hashirama gone, Kanoha would lose morale, and with my team and I gone, he gets rid of a potential threat Naruto said. Kakuzu looked shocked. How the hell did he figure it out, oh well, he'll be dead in a few minutes he thought. If you think that you've got me all figured out, then you're the wrong kid Kakuzu said. Kakuzu then tried to use his earth grudge fear technique on Naruto, but it just passed through him again. Come on kid, we both know you have to turn tangible again to hit me Kakuzu said in frustration. In his argument, Kakuzu had totally forgotten about the rakage in Hashirama. Bigakazuki a gruff voice shouted. Kakuzu turned around and to his shock, the rakage was right in front of him, with his fingers driven through his chest. It's going to take more than that Kakuzu said as he used his earthly grudge to take hold of the rakage and began to squeeze. Makurik no Hashirama said. A giant dragon with a trunk nose burst out of the ground in the arena and went straight for Kakuzu, who was forced to release his hold on the rakage. Kakuzu jumped to the roof in an attempt to escape the dragon. It was then that he saw Team 7, fully healed. Just because you're technically immortal, doesn't mean we can't kill you, Kakuzu San Naruto said from behind him. He turned around to a side he wasn't prepared to see. Naruto was there, in a three-tailed state, silver chakra had consumed his body and made him look more feral. Yurijinch Kriki Kakuzu shouted in fear. Yes, only unlike your friend, I cannot be consumed by the hatred that comes with it Naruto said, his grin becoming more feral as he entered the four-tailed state. Naruto's teammates jumped to his side, and Tsunade followed suit and entered her own four-tailed state. Tujinch Kriki, Dama Kakuzu whispered to himself. He was brought out of his thoughts when Naruto started charging what looked to be a Bajgama, only about as small as his palm. CHM mini Bajgama he said before firing. Kakuzu managed to dodge it, but the explosion was great enough to reach the bottom mask on his right hand side. He didn't get any time to rest as when he landed, Jiraiya and Arachimaru were right on top of him, and they were attacking with such precision that he had to jump back or risk losing another mask. At least that's what he thought until Tsunade came and threw a punch right through his wind mask, leaving only his earth and fire mask. He jumped away from the four when he realized that he had forgotten about the Hokage and Rakage. Jigakazuki the Rakage said, driving two fingers through his earth mask. Kakuzu, the invasion was a failure, they knew we were coming, a voice behind Kakuzu said. Naruto recognized the voice, it was Hayden. Pray tell, what time do you call this? You were meant to be here as soon as the explosion went off, Kakuzu shouted at his companion. I just told you, the invasion failed, the Nidame Hokage was waiting for us, we only managed to injure a few, we're in full, retreat Hayden said while he panted, beads of sweat were falling from his chin. We need to get out of here, I only have two hearts left, Kakuzu said. Hayden looked at the group before the two shunshined away. Naruto and Tsunade dropped their tailed beast states, and while there were a few visible burns and scars, it was nothing serious. Hashirama had a look of relief on his face as he looked over the village. The group, including the rakage, rushed towards the only place that had smoke rising from it. When they got there however, it wasn't a sight they were expecting. Abarama was lying on an operating table, unconscious. What the hell happened here Hashirama said in a demanding tone. I'm afraid that Tabarama Sama was taken by surprise, we don't have time to get to the hospital, so we're operating here a nurse who was carrying equipment to the table said, her voice was reasonably distressed. 
Naruto looked over to Tsunade and saw that she was extremely worried that Tavarama wouldn't make it. He held on to her hand, and even after all this time, it amazed him at how easily it calmed her down. Tsunade looked at Naruto and he just smiled. Tsunade seemed to calm down a bit, but Naruto could still feel her tense grip and sweaty hand, telling him that she was only putting a brave face on. After an hour of intense surgery, Tabarama woke up. The only problem was that they were still doing surgery on him. Shit, he shouldn't be awake one of the doctors yelled. H. Hashirama Tabarama's voice was raspy as he reached out to his brother. He then made a hand sign and touched Hashirama's forehead as he whispered, memory transfer making Hashirama stumble back. Tabarama then looked towards Tsunade and Naruto. When he saw their interlocked hands, he smiled, before letting out his final breath. There was a morbid among everyone there. Tsunade's eyes were filled with tears, but her expression stayed the same as she knew it would have been hopeless. The surrounding shinobi all turned towards the small, makeshift surgery table. The look of despair and anguish on all of their faces. The silent state as time seemed to stay still. Naruto put his arm around Tsunade's shoulders when she started to shake and tremble. Since Naruto was slightly taller than she was, she was able to cry into his shoulder silently. Naruto comforted her quietly as he didn't want to break the silence. Only three Rimen he thought as he felt his shoulder becoming increasingly damp. Naruto looked at the rakage, and even he seemed to be paying his respects. Naruto looked to the sky as a drop of rain splashed against his forehead. The rain started to pour down. Later that day, Konoha would find out what had happened. Naruto knew that it would be a sad time for Konoha, and there would be people in the thousands to pay their respects, but right now, let them go about their normal lives, as they remain in the dark about the death that would send shockwaves through the nations. Three days later, Naruto slowly stirred out of bed. He stared at the ground beneath him as he remembered the last three days he spent comforting Tsunade. It was only now that he realized just how close he himself had grown towards the people he now called his friends and family. When Konoha had been informed of Tabarama's death, the silence was so great that even the noise of the rain seemed to lose its volume. It hadn't stopped raining in the last three days. Some people said that even the heavens were crying as Konoha gained the record for most rainfall in Hai no Kuni. Naruto remembered the funeral for Saratobi in his old time, and knew that it proved to be the third largest amount of rainfall Konoha ever had. He walked over to his closet and got dressed in funeral attire. He knew what kind of grief Tsunade must be going through, and he would take all the things she would say to him in his stride, because he knew she would regret the bad things she'd say after a while. He walked downstairs to see Tsukiko beside a blood clone to take care of the twins, while she was dressed in a funeral dress. She looked over to see Naruto. Ready to go he asked her. She nodded and they slowly walked towards the memorial shrine. As they walked, more people began to leave their houses and joined them. They eventually reached the graveyard, which was large enough to hold hundreds of thousands of men and women. There weren't that many graves for shinobi compared to civilians as they were split down one side. However, at the head of the graveyard was a large shrine. Naruto saw Tsunade, just staring at the grave that her granduncle would soon occupy. He walked up to her and put his hand on her shoulder. Tsunade was so deep in thought that she jumped when he placed his hand on her shoulder. Tsunade turned to see Naruto and moved closer to him as she looked back to the ground. She probably didn't understand what love meant when it came to someone she wasn't related to since she was still young, so she didn't seem to think that her actions were anything out of the ordinary. Naruto frowned when he saw the look on her face and was about to say something to her, but a gong sounded through the quiet graveyard. People made way as the coffin that contained Tabarama was carried through the crowd. When they reached the grave, they laid the coffin next to the grave. The priest at the head of the grave started to speak, but Naruto wasn't paying attention. He used his free hand to form some hand signs, and two red roses appeared in his hand. Tsunade looked at him when he handed her one. She took it from his hand and stared at it intently. Unknown to her, Naruto had placed a seal on it that would stick to her. It would open when she was calm enough for it to do so. Soon enough, perhaps a little too soon, it was time to put the coffin into the grave. Everyone started to drop flowers on top of the coffin, so Tsunade walked over with Naruto, and the two dropped theirs in. Tsunade looked up at the pictures of Tabarama and a fire in her eyes that had been reduced to embers relit itself as she gained a look of determination. Naruto looked at her in surprise. He didn't think that the seal would take effect so soon, nor did he think it would take effect as well as it did. When they were walking out of the graveyard, Tsunade turned to him. Can you help me get stronger than them she asked. Naruto was slightly confused. Like who he asked. You said your parents put you through a strict training regime when you were two, and you could take on the rakage only two years later, can you help me get to that level she asked with complete determination. If I did, what would you do with that power Naruto asked, worried that Tsunade might turn out like Sasuke did. Tsunade looked down to the ground. I don't want the people I care about to die like that, I want to protect them till they die from a natural cause, not by being killed she said, looking straight into his eyes. She's matured a bit, I think it's safe Akira's voice rang through his head. 
Naruto sighed. Alright he said. Tsunade visibly cheered up. On one condition he said with a smirk. Tsunade's face halted the smile she was about to show. You don't complain about anything, just do it, you complain too much, and too often Naruto said, his smirk turning into a genuine smile. Tsunade smiled and they walked out with the last few people. They were so busy with their thoughts that they never noticed their fingers interlocking. They both went home that evening, ready for different things. Tsunade was ready to dedicate the next couple of years of her life to training with Naruto. Naruto was ready to start what he came here to do. Jiraiya and Orochimaru would also be training with his blood clones, he wasn't about to leave them behind, while he and Tsunade advanced. Naruto walked into Tsukiko's house, and as soon as he entered, Amaterasu was coming to greet him. It sometimes crept him out how she was able to get to the door, just as he was about to walk in. He picked her up and closed the door as he walked into the sitting room. Tsunade walked home to her grandparents. She knew how close they were with their brother brother-in-law. She saw her mother, staring at a picture of him. It amazed her at how many lives one soul could touch. She even noticed that Nawaki was quiet, though that might be because he was put to bed early, she honestly didn't know. She walked to her room and on her bed were the healing books she had been reading before the third exam. Damn it, I'm so close, I know it, just a little longer, then I'll be as good as Jiji she said to herself. She started to put the books away when she saw one that she had never seen before. At a first glance, the book looked plain and old, not really appearing to have any worth. When she opened the inside, the title showed it all. Healing, an advanced look on the art of no hand signs, by Hashirama Senju she muttered aloud to herself, feeling like slapping her forehead at the title her grandfather came up with. She saw a small note on the bottom, hidden by a dot when she released it, she was surprised at its contents as she read the note out loud. Dear Tsunade-chan, don't tell your grandfather, but I borrowed one of his books, I know you love it, maybe in a couple of years' time you'll be as good a medic as he was in his prime, love Mido. Tsunade smiled. Don't worry Bachan, I'll be the best at everything I do she said to herself. In her head, a little voice laughed a bit. Except gambling the voice said. Tsunade started muttering about a cheeky fox before putting the book under her pillow. These next few years were going to be long, and with war breaking out soon, Kanoha would need all the help it could get. She started to think about what happened with Naruto earlier and smiled again, only this time, she blushed. She was glad Nawaki was too young to say much, otherwise he'd be teasing her about it. It was at this moment that Tsunade realized she had a crush on him, and it wasn't a childish crush either. Two years later, the sakura tree shook gently as a small breeze blew the leaves off them. The silence was broken by a loud clang of metal. There was a blur of movement, and four figures stood in the clearing. Three figures all went to attack the last one, and said figures retaliated by throwing exploding seals attached to kunai. The three figures jumped out of the way but continued their strike. The lone figure threw another kunai that whizzed past the three figures, and the three turned around to block a strike from three more figures. Those three figures burst into smoke and in a frantic pace, the three turned around, only to find a hand gripping each of their feet. The hands pulled them down before they could do anything. Check and mate, the lone figure said. The figure was Naruto. His hair now reached his cheek, and there was an obvious red tinge to its tips. He was dressed in typical Anbu clothing, and had his two swords strapped to his back. The three figures in the ground were his team. Orochimaru had face paint on his eyes, and the hand he had managed to keep above ground, held a tanto. Jirei also had face paint, running from his eyes down to the bottom of his cheekbone. Tsunade had her hair tied up into a high ponytail. When Naruto got them out of the ground, it was evident at how much they grew. Naruto was still the tallest at 4 feet, quite tall for a 7-year-old. Hirachimaru was 3 foot 9 inches, and Jiraiya was only a couple of centimeters smaller. Tsunade was the smallest at 3 feet 7 inches, but she didn't seem to mind. Damn it that is so not fair Jiraiya mumbled as he brushed the dirt off himself. Whoever accused me of being fair Naruto said while smirking. Come on, we've wasted enough time on training Naruto said as he walked out of the clearing. He didn't like being disturbed during training, so he trained his team in training ground 44 of the forest of death. At first, they had been scared of going in there, but after a while, those feelings faded, and each of them knew the place like the backs of their hands. They ran along the rooftops towards the Hokage Tower to get a mission. In recent years, Team 7 had become famous within the village and infamous within other villages. Now they couldn't beat everyone, but they had a fair chance. While Tsunade, Jirei and Orochimaru had come a long way, he was sure that he was the only one who would be capable of beating someone like Hans more the Kinjin Kimdai without assistance. Not that he wouldn't have had a difficult time without the Rinnegan, just that it was possible. They entered the tower through the window to avoid attention and sure to say that they came at the wrong time. Sitting there in the office was Saratobi. He was holding a book that Naruto knew quite well. It was the inspiration for Jiraiya's Itcha Itcha series. Naruto cleared his throat, making hairs and jump in surprise. 
When the man turned, he saw Team 7 standing there, all except Jiraiya with some sort of a scowl. What is it he asked them, hoping they would get what they needed soon so he could go back to reading. We're looking for a mission Naruto said, his eyes involuntarily twitching. Hiruzen started searching through A and S ranked missions. Hmm, this is strange he said. Intel reports some suspicious activity at the three-way border of Hai, no Kuni, Suchi no Kuni and Kei's no Kuni, Iwa and Suna, are supposedly sending troops to their front lines, investigate this and report, back he said as he handed them the scroll. Naruto felt something in the back of his mind telling him something bad was about to happen, but ignored it. They got ready and set out on their mission. About four miles away from their destination, Tsune decided to speak up. What do you think they're doing she asked. Maybe they're going to war with each other, they're not exactly the strongest nations, hell Suna is only one of the great nations for its sheer size, a minor country like Taki could beat them Jiraiya suggested. Or maybe they're setting up an alliance that would benefit both of them Orochimaru said. Either way, they pose a threat since they both lay on high no, Kuni's border Naruto said. How could an alliance pose a threat Tsunade asked. They might be joining together to attack, Kami knows how Kanoha would feel to lose Hashirama, and he isn't exactly in fighting form these days Naruto said. Tsunade looked down. Age was starting to take its toll on Hashirama, and it was showing. His bones were creaking and his breathing became difficult if he coughed. He had lived longer than anyone else had from his era. In fact, once he and Mito died the clan war survivors would all be gone, they were the last of an era. They reached the border and hid in the threes. Not five minutes later, the nidame Tsuchikij and his heir, Lenoki, arrived while the sandame Kazukiyaj arrived with a few Jimin. What do you think they're up to Jiraiya whispered. It is a bit suspicious, two letters out in the open with very few guards, MK even went as far as to take the next Tsuchikij, very suspicious Naruto said. Are your armies ready MK said to the young Kazukiyaj. They are, my men tell me that in a little over 10 years we will have at least 3 million shinobi and kinoichi between us the Kazukiyaj answered. 10 years is a long time to wait to attack Kanoha Noki said. The members of Team 7 nearly gasped. 3 million well and able men and women, attacking their village, war seemed to be closer than ever. Any word from the other villages the Kazakiage asked. Taki has agreed to join us as has Yuga, other than that we are still waiting for a reply Noki replied. By this time, Team 7 were close to trembling. Jiraiya was covered with sweat, and Rachimaru was breathing heavier than normal. Tsunade was too stunned to even show emotion, and Naruto was confused. Did me being here really cause such a disruption in time he thought. You'd be surprised at what can happen to Naruto-kun, you better get out of there, and fast Akira said to him. Naruto motioned for his team to leave when MK looked up into the trees. Team 7 froze in their places. MK continued to look towards the trees that stood at the edge of High no Kuni, while the third Kazukiage and Anoki discussed their plans. His eyes narrowed before he looked back. Team 7 left as silently as they could. Three minutes later, Naruto's eyes widened as they ran. Shit, he saw us, quicken the pace, he's catching up fast he said to the three. Team 7's eyes widened and ran as fast as they could. With Tsunade at the front, she was surprised when Naruto pulled her to the ground with Jiraiya and Orochimaru. Above them was a bright light that was fading. The light had been where they once were. I must say I'm impressed, and here I thought that you weren't what you were made out to be MK said as he slowly walked towards Team 7. Each member then grabbed hold of Naruto. Not a second later, another white light engulfed them, shining brightly before fading. Heh, they aren't much use when they're dust Lenoki said with a smirk as he panted lightly. Do not be so quick to judge Anoki, they are still alive, and well MK said as he looked towards the sky. He barely had time to bring his arms up to block, Lenoki wasn't so lucky. Tsunade had used her monster strength to kick Lenoki into the ground, and Naruto managed to force MK back several meters before he jumped away. Damn kid that hurt MK said with a small chuckle. Says the guy that tried to turn me to dust Naruto said. Only those that have been killed by it know that, how do you know it MK asked with genuine curiosity. Unlike most people who believe that you just destroy any remains, I managed to not only figure it out, but I even recreated it, not to your level, but near enough Naruto said. MK's eyes widened. If that's true, then why don't you give me a demonstration he replied, calling Naruto's bluff. Naruto complied. Jinten. Genkai Hakuri no he said, forming a sphere with a bright light in it, also shaped as a sphere. Naruto fired and seconds later, MK was no longer visible. Naruto quickly took out a kunai and brought it up sharply. With his camouflage gone, MK revealed himself, the bandages around his jaw were falling apart. A fission and a simple camouflage won't help you here Naruto said with a smirk. You are definitely living up to your name, Yuzumaki-san, but I can't let you escape with the knowledge of our attack MK said. Meanwhile with Team 7 and Lenoki, Jiraiya and Orochimaru were dodging giant boulders. Tsune just punched her way through them. Damn you brats, you aren't going to beat me easily Lenoki shouted at the top of his voice. 
He was forced to dodge Tsune due to her strength, and any attempts to take the other two as hostages ended with burns, and in one case, a broken thumb. For a small man, you really have a loud voice Tsune said, trying to get the man to slip up. She didn't have time to hear his answer as she had to dodge an incoming rush of iron sand. Not exactly wise to use something that's still being tested Minoki said. The third Kazuki had just smirked. MK jumped back beside them, his face now visible with many cuts, his age showing from wrinkles around his mouth. They definitely live up to their name, I am nearly spent he said panting heavily. Minoki was shocked to see his mentor in such a state and looked back towards Naruto, who barely had a scratch. Using efficient to split my strength was a bad idea, it'll take a long time to get back to full strength, if I even come out alive MK thought. Naruto went through some hand signs and whispered something no one could hear. When he brought his hands out, everyone was shocked to see a Sharingan eye, fully matured. Naruto whispered another word, and the three older men's eyes glazed over. He then created several blood clones and had them use a complicated henge that even the three cage in front of him couldn't detect. He then killed the clones. Come on, we have to get out of here quickly, they won't remember a thing about us Naruto said to his teammates. They just dumbly nodded. Even after knowing him for a few years, he still managed to surprise them. They set out to Konoha, intent on sharing the info they had gained with Hashirama. All through the journey back, Naruto could see that his teammates were nervous and he couldn't blame them. Even though the attack was a decade away, it still made one shiver. Imagining a force of three million well-abled men and women attacking one village that currently only had 300,000 shinobi, it would have been slaughtered. We can definitely get Kumo to side with us, and Kiri is a possibility. If I can get an audience with a Mizukage, he would be glad to hear what I have to offer Naruto thought with a mischievous grin on his face. If we can get both of them on our side, it would be mass suicide to attack, the only problem is that my team would probably be forced to commit genocide for the village, but I've already seen humans can't live without war, maybe they could live without hatred without reason, but without war is out of the question he thought, his grin turning into a frown. Don't worry Naruto-kun, Kami and I had you sent back for a reason, she's probably pulling strings for you right now, Madara needs to be defeated, and you can't do that if you're fighting another war Akira said in his mind, trying to console him. I know Akira, but I haven't got much of your chakra yet, two tails at most Naruto thought. You seem to forget how fast I regenerate my tails, you've already taken six tails, and I've only been adding it to your chakra steadily, if I were to give you the other four right now, a lot of the things around you would either die or get severe burns, you will have two other four tails before this time next year, and I will have all my tails again in four years. The tenth tail is always the most annoying to regenerate Akira said to him. Naruto was shocked that she had managed to give him so many tails without him, knowing that he never noticed they had come to the Hokage Tower. They walked in to see Hashirama and Saratobi talking to the council. What is the meaning of your interruption my pupils Hashirama said. Bad news Naruto said. The civilian council doesn't need to hear this, it's too important he said, his eyes full of nervousness. Hashirama sighed and dismissed the civilian council, who grudgingly left, not wanting to get on his bad side. So, what's so important that you had to interrupt this meeting Hashirama asked again. Naruto put seals up around the room and then proceeded to explain the situation they were in. Sure as hell, the whole room was silent at the information they were given. This is bad sensei, we cannot just let them get away with this, we must act before they do Danzm said, fear evident in his voice. Naruto knew that Danzm hadn't set root yet, but he still gave a wary look to the man. Kumo will definitely join us to fight, I'm not sure about Kiri though Hashirama said. You're actually going ahead with fighting, what if Kiri doesn't join us Danzm was about to go on a rant, but Naruto stopped him. Let's just say I have a bit of information that the Mizukage would love to get his hands on, especially since it concerns his family he said. So you would threaten him to get his allegiance, not a wise move Danzm said growling. Naruto felt a sense of irony. The man who was against such a thing would one day support it. I never said anything of the sort, but I do have information on his family that he would love to hear, I would be surprised if he doesn't join our cause Naruto's statement raised many questions, but none were ready to ask. If you are so confident in it then you will set out for Kiri in a few days time, for now rest, the council is dismissed, but I warn you, do not let this get out, we don't need more problems Hashirama said, letting the threat sink in. You should probably go, Tsukiko will be worried if you don't show up for dinner Hashirama said. It annoyed Naruto when Hashirama treated him like a child, but then again, he couldn't exactly argue when he had the body of a seven-year-old. With a heavy sigh, he nodded and bid his team a farewell. He jumped across the rooftops, not wanting to get in the public eye. When he entered Tsukiko's house, he was run down by a purple blur. Rudo's small voice lisped. The Madarasu-chan, how many times have I told you not to do that he asked a small girl on top of him. Amaterasu blushed. Naruto couldn't believe how much energy she had, even though he didn't have that much at her age, and he was a stamina monster. It scared him. 
Amaterasu's hair flowed to her shoulders due to Tsukiko not wanting to cut her beautiful hair away. She was an inch and a half taller than other girls her age were, and her love for Naruto was astounding. She almost loved her brother more than her mother and her real brother. Naruto chuckled at the girl and lifted her up, something that wasn't easy to do nowadays, but he still managed. He walked into the kitchen where Tsukiko was cooking his favorite meal. Raymond. The evening Naruto kun Tsukiko said, not taking her head away from the boiling pot of noodles. Evening Naruto replied. Kitsuro and Amaterasu sat at the table, well more like stood on the chairs. What have I told you two about standing on the furniture Tsukiko scolded. The twins pouted and got down before running into the sitting room. So, what happened Tsukiko asked him as she started getting the miso soup ready. Sorry, can't tell you Naruto said. That bad Tsukiko asked, shocked. Naruto just nodded. Dinner's on the table Tsukiko shouted. Naruto's fast maturing had an effect on the twins, they were more like four-year-olds instead of two-year-olds. Naruto ate in silence while Tsukiko ate and scolded the twins for one thing or another. When dinner was over, Tsukiko put the twins to bed and sat next to Naruto on the sofa. It's the war isn't it Tsukiko said. Naruto nodded. How bad will it be she asked worriedly. Naruto sighed heavily. Absolute genocide he said. Tsukiko gulped, not looking away from the floor. How long she asked. Ten years Naruto said. Tsukiko visibly relaxed, but Naruto could see that she was still tense. It's amazing what my being here can change he said, looking out the window, the night shift of the village getting ready to start their jobs. Tsukiko smiled. Yeah, to think that without you, we'd already be in war and be pushed against a wall with two of our three Hokages dead instead of just one, you've probably saved thousands of lives Tsukiko said, her smile widening. Naruto smiled and sighed. Enough of these morbid thoughts, I don't need you like you were a couple of years ago he said to Tsukiko. Tsukiko smiled when she remembered what Naruto had done for her. She felt ashamed for not having told him when he could have helped her greatly if she just told him earlier. Okay then, how's Tsune Tsukiko asked with a teasing smile. Naruto smiled when he realized what she was implying. Just because her mental age is older than her body doesn't mean she's changed that much he said. That statement wasn't as true as he made it out to be though. He couldn't believe that what he originally only made out to be a story actually worked. He knew that Tsukiyomi could be used for training, but for weeks, not for years. Tsunade was still the youngest of them with her mental age at 16. Jiraiya's was 17 and Arachimaru's was nearly 18. Thought I feel old, even though I left soon after giving them a training regime I still aged he thought. Naruto's mind had aged up to 22, more than three times his physical age. All of it made his head spin, so he just decided to drop it. Not that easy with everyone close to you reminding you about it. He was brought back to the real world when Tsukiko snapped her fingers in front of his face. You still haven't answered my question, Naruto kun Tsukiko said. I'll be honest, she's been in love with me since Tabarama died, not love like a crush, real love Naruto said. Tsukiko raised an eyebrow. And, what now she asked. Naruto sighed. She's trying not to let her new hormones get the better of her, she still thinks I haven't noticed, I can't say I blame her though, how would you feel if you felt like a love struck teen in a child's body he said with a small smirk. Tsukiko giggled at this. I'd probably feel like how she said. So how long until she actually admits it Tsukiko asked curiously. In light of recent events, I'd give her around a day, maybe less Naruto said. And you're not finding it strange that the woman you called old is now younger than you Tsukiko asked. Hey, that's just my way of showing respect, Kami knows how much of a relief it was for her, after hearing Sama every two minutes Naruto said. Well, I need to prepare for training tomorrow, Hashirama's health isn't getting any better, and Tsunade needs to know more about the Mokuten Naruto said as he got off the sofa. Didn't you already go over that in the Tsukiko asked. Actually, that was the only thing we didn't go over Naruto said. I'll never understand the way you do things Tsukiko said with a sigh. My old life was never orthodox, why break the habit of a lifetime Naruto replied. He then made his way to his room and went to sleep. He woke up a few hours later when he felt a presence enter the room. He opened his eyes slightly to see Amaterasu, shaking and nervous. Ruto she whispered. What's wrong Rasu-chan Naruto whispered back. I had a nightmare she said softly. Come here Naruto said to her. She scuffled over to him. First of all, how did you get out of your bed, second, why did you come to me he asked, trying not to scare the girl off. I didn't want to wake Kasan up the girl replied timidly. That answers the second question, what about the first Naruto asked. The girl didn't answer and Naruto sighed. Alright, you don't have to answer, I let you get away with this one Naruto said. Can I sleep with you Amaterasu asked. Naruto was surprised that she would ask that but complied with a nod. Amaterasu got into the bed next to him and she immediately plunged her face into his shoulder. SHH, don't worry Rasu-chan, it was only a bad dream, it wasn't real he said, trying to comfort the little girl. Amaterasu eventually fell asleep, clinging to Naruto's arm. 
Wonder what that was about Naruto thought before drifting back to sleep. The next morning. Naruto's eyes slowly opened as sunlight shone through the curtains onto his face. He turned to see Amaterasu clinging to his arm with her thumb in her mouth. He could see where Anko got her looks from. If his memory serves to be correct, the only difference is that Anko's eyes were brown, while Amaterasu's eyes were blue. He had subconsciously started to stroke her hair, and she slowly woke from it. Feeling better now Rasu-chan he said. She just nodded slowly, her eyes were still half closed as she wiped the sleep from her eyes. Do you want to tell me about the nightmare, it will make you feel better he asked. Amaterasu just shook her head and put her face back into his shoulder. Naruto sighed as he continued to stroke her hair for a few minutes before he got up, holding her in his arms as he walked out of his room. She fell back to sleep on his shoulder just as Tsukiko walked out of her room. Naruto explained the situation to her, and her lips broke into a small smile as she took her daughter back. Naruto went back to his room to get into his gear and grab his equipment before leaving. He made his way towards the Senju compound with a lot on his mind. She's going to be really strange for the next month, sigh, I hope she comes clean, I really don't want to drag this out he said to himself. It wasn't long until he reached the compound and what he saw amused him to no end. Tsunade was hanging upside down with chakra chains holding her ankles. Nido was standing there with the chains coming from her sleeve. Not so fast Tsunade-chan, I don't think Naruto-kun would appreciate you running into him Nido said. Tsunade turned her head to see Naruto struggling to hold his laughter in, and she blushed. She was seven feet in the air, but if she were on the ground then she'd be standing three feet away from him. Maybe next time you look where you're going, Tsunade-chan Mido said with a small smile as she let the girl down. See you later Tsunade-chan, try not to run into anyone Mido teased. Tsunade pouted and blushed as she walked out with Naruto. As they ran towards the forest of death, Naruto could see that Tsunade was extremely uncomfortable. It's strange isn't it he said, bringing her out of her thoughts. What she asked in confusion. The hormones, having them earlier than most, is strange Naruto repeated. Tsunade just nodded. You seem to forget that you're not the only one to have Tsunade-chan Naruto said. What do you mean she asked. You're visibly uncomfortable around me, in my experience, and you know how old my mind is, there are very few things that could mean he said, hinting to her to just tell him. They arrived at the forest when Tsunade just hugged him. This is so confusing, part of me just wants to play and the other part of me, I can't describe it she said. A warm and numbing feeling in your body Naruto asked, already knowing the answer. Well, yeah she answered with a blush as she rubbed the back of her head. And it feels like it's directed towards me Naruto continued. Yet yeah, Tsunade answered nervously. And it makes you feel uncomfortable around me he said. Tsunade gulped and muttered a yes. Naruto chuckled a bit as he realized something. Tsunade was a love sick teen in a child's body. Soon his chuckles became loud enough for Tsunade to become worried. Naruto saw the look on her face and nearly broke into laughter. Tsunade, you are in love Naruto said, stressing each word. It took Tsunade a few seconds to realize what Naruto just said. L love, this is what Bachan was talking about she thought. She was pulled from her thoughts when Naruto hugged her back. Just tell me this Tsunade, how long have you felt like this Naruto asked, secretly hoping it wasn't just a crush. Over a year she stuttered. Inwardly, Naruto was relaxed. But he kept his composure. The next question Tsunade asked him caught him by surprise. Do you love me she whispered. He let a single chuckle escape him before he answered. Yes he said. It was a simple, single word. But that was all Tsunade needed, and she gently cried into his shoulder. She still doesn't fully understand it, maybe in a couple of years he thought as he comforted her. Tsunade kept her head buried in his shoulder as she pondered on the revelation. Love huh, ugh I really wish I didn't have the body of a child anymore, I feel sorry for Naruto-kun, wait, when did I start thinking of him as kun she thought. She was glad her head was buried in his shoulder, because if the heat from her face was anything to go by, her whole face was red. Naruto laughed silently to himself when he felt his shoulder get extremely warm. They spent another couple of minutes before Tsunade was brave enough to bring her head out of his shoulder. They then entered the forest to train. The next day, Naruto woke up as he did every day, he got dressed, got his breakfast and left to go for a mission. So imagine his surprise when he was attacked with paper shuriken. He turned around to see a group of children around five years old running. Probably playing shinobi he thought with a chuckle. He saw that one of the children wasn't paying attention and was heading straight for him. The young boy collided with Naruto, who was unfazed. He knew he recognized the boy, but he couldn't put his finger on it. The boy looked up to Naruto and realized who he was. Naruto stifled a chuckle at the boy's expression. The boy's friends called him. What's wrong Sakumo one of them asked as they ran past Naruto. Sakumo just got up and ran after them, still looking back at Naruto. Naruto meanwhile was hitting himself mentally, trying to remember where he had seen the boy before. He's quite the prodigy you know an old and raspy voice behind him said. Naruto turned around to see Hashirama with a walking stick. 
Who would have seen the day when the Kami no Shinobi needed a stick to hold himself up Naruto said with a smirk. Don't change the subject Hashirama said with a mock frown. Let me guess, you're having an I know him, I just don't recognize him situation he spoke as he looked at the young children as they disappeared into the crowds. Yeah Naruto said with a small chuckle. I believe you know him as the White Fang Hashirama said. Naruto's eyebrows rose in surprise. By the way, Tsunade is the only one going with you to Kiri, Sarah-chan is teaching the two boys to Jutsu, and since Tsunade wants to learn the Mokuten, you're the only one in good enough shape to do so Hashirama said. I have a feeling it's more than just that Naruto said. Hashirama nodded and chuckled. Indeed, she talks in her sleep about you and is spending more time with Mido, she really wants to try and understand what love is, she doesn't have many more years to go, either Hashirama said with a wink. Naruto's face let a light blush escape. I thank the day when she finds out that all the Hokage have read at least three novels, I'm glad I wasn't corrupted he said. But you have been there, right Hashirama asked. I only got that far once, every other girl got too, tired Naruto said as he remembered his experiences. Well, I had best beheading, Tsunade is waiting for you at the gate Hashirama said as he walked towards the Senju compound. Naruto could say he pitied the man, the last two years were not so kind to him. He sighed as he made his way towards the gate. He saw Tsunade, lazily playing with a kunai as she chewed on a dango stick. He smirked as he snuck up behind her and took out a kunai. He turned around sharply and barely nicked her neck with the kunai, showing her he could have killed her if he was an enemy. Better luck next time Tsunade-chan Naruto teased. Tsunade pouted as she put her kunai away. Come on, we have a mission to complete Naruto said. The two then left for Kiri. After a few hours, Naruto could see that Tsunade was blushing and nearly chuckled. It can wait he thought. So what on earth could you know that the Mizukage would want to know? Tsunade asked him. Naruto's mind was rampant, searching for an answer. His eyes lit up. I had a vision, he said. A vision, really? Akira asked from his mind, causing him to sign mentally. A vision about what Tsunade asked. Naruto's eyes widened. I'll tell you later, when we don't have visitors, Naruto said as he turned and, with his sword drawn, severed a man's body in half. Tsunade's eyes widened as she backflipped behind another man who was now caught in his own trap, impaled by spears. A group of men jumped down from the higher trees. Naruto sighed. They were now able to see how close to Kiri they were, within a half of a kilometer away. Give up, you're outnumbered and are within range of our village, one of the men said with a sneer. Naruto didn't answer as Tsunade grabbed his shoulder. The man smirked and rushed the two. He was shocked when he slipped right through them. But he was downright terrified when he saw all of his colleagues screaming in agony and dead. Naruto slowly turned his head, showing the jibigan to the man. He screamed before falling to his knees and slitting his throat. You have a lot of guts, killing my men a large man said, a group of elites behind him. And your men had a lot of guts attacking me, Naruto retorted. Why you the man started before a powerful voice filled the air. Sadu, stand down, the boy said. Mizukijsama Sadu said, sounding slightly fearful. When I told you not to attack them, I meant it, I'll deal with you later, for now, I have an alliance to work out a man in blue and white robe said as he walked between the men. Naruto smirked, the man was a good liar. All of the men left and the Mizukij led Naruto and Tsunade to his office. So tell me, why are you here, you're obviously not here to finish the job the man said. We are here to ask for an alliance, and that you turn down the one Iwa and Tsuna gave you Naruto said. The Mizukage kept his composure, but on the inside, he was sweating. However, knowing you might be stuck for a decision, I have an offer, not for the Mizukage, but for Terum plus Masanori Naruto said. Now the Mizukage, Masanori, was intrigued. And what would you have to offer he asked Naruto. I had a vision involving your family, however this info is too sensitive, and I'm afraid your bodyguards aren't allowed here Naruto said. Masanori was intrigued and motioned for his bodyguards to leave. Naruto took out a kunai and threw it in a pot in the corner was released, revealing an Iwa Shinobi, now dead. Now that we're alone, my vision involves your granddaughter, obviously yet to be born Naruto started. Tsunade's reaction was exactly like Masanori's reaction. Shock and yet curiosity. Go on Masanori said. It'll be better if I show you Naruto said. He activated the Jibigen and cast a dot he had spent the last few hours making these fake memories, so he could give a reasonable offer to the Mizukage, but not reveal he's from the future. It showed Mei leading the rebellion to siege Kiri from the Yande Mizukage's control. This is what would happen should you lose control of Kiri, your clan next to wiped out, along with most of Kiri's other clans. The point is that if your granddaughter was trained with my regime, she wouldn't need help he said as the change to Mei fighting hundreds of shinobi that were reanimated at once. It would take her years to eventually reach this level, but by then, Kiri will be lost to a war greater than the pending one he finished. 
What do you mean a war greater than the pending one? Masanori asked. The great allied shinobi war, the five great nations joining together to fight one man and his army, right now, only Hashirama and I know of it, but if we can prepare for it, we stand a much better chance Naruto said. Well who the hell could it be that you can't take Tsunade asked. When your grandfather said he killed Ichiha Madara, he lied Naruto said, letting what he was saying sink in. Your granddaughter is one of those few who will be able to help fight him head on, if she's stronger earlier, we stand a better chance he finished. Naruto turned to see Tsunade was shaking with fear in her eyes. And, how long do we have to prepare for that war Masanori asked. Just under 50 years at most, 30 at least, it's still a long way away Naruto said. Masanori sighed. I will side with Konoha, I will leave with you so don't go anywhere Masanori said. Naruto and Tsunade then left the room, waiting outside as the man gathered his guards and materials. Naruto could see that Tsunade was still shaking and now staring at the floor. He put his arm around her and she turned to him. Don't worry, we'll be ready by then Naruto said with a smile. The scar on his eye from his fight with Kakuzu was still red and made his look of confidence almost look better, if that were possible. Tsunade smiled slightly and leaned in closer to him. Naruto realized something. She never even wanted training, she just wanted to be close to me again he thought as the sight of her blush. He sighed mentally. Why am I always the one that gets everything lady thought. A few minutes later, Masanori walked out with his bodyguards and they left for Konoha. A soft breeze swept across a grassy clearing that was surrounded by forest. There was nothing but a sense of calmness in the area. It was broken by a large fireball hitting the center of the clearing and burning the grass. A young girl in her teens burst from the trees, followed by a young boy around the same age. Another fireball came from behind them, forcing both to separate. The boy in his late teens jumped out from the trees and managed to get in front of the two younger teens. The sun could be seen as it started to rise above the mountains. The older teen made a hand sign and fired another, larger fireball at the two younger teens. They jumped out of the way, only to be caught by a sphere of water. The elder teen walked towards them and released them. You two need more practice, the elder teen said. The sun was high enough to let light in the clearing. But Naruto Nai, the girl complained. Naruto looked at her sternly. He was now standing at 6 foot 4 inches, and his hair reached his shoulder blades. There was an obvious silver tint to his hair, and it was tied into a small ponytail at the end. No buts Rasu-chan, you and Kitsuro-kun still have a lot of work to do to make Chikin Naruto said to the girl. Amaterasu was just under 5 feet, and her purple hair went all the way down to her waist. She wore a headband with Kanoha's symbol around her neck. Kitsuro had dyed his hair jet black and kept it short. He was just a little taller than Amaterasu, and he wore his headband on his head, just like Naruto remembered Zabuza had. In truth what he said was wrong. Both were nearly good enough to make Jmin, but he wasn't going to tell them that for fear that they would start complaining. You'd be surprised at how much a 13-year-old could complain, but two would just drive him mad. Amaterasu pouted. Now, we'll continue again next week Naruto said. Kitsuro left, leaving Naruto and Amaterasu alone. I suppose I miraculously owe you a treat to something he asked the younger girl. Amaterasu's pout turned into a smile, and Naruto sighed. When the girl wanted something, she got it. Come on then he said as he left the clearing, Amaterasu following him closely. I'm too nice to you, you really are spoiled rotten he said as they entered a dango bar. Naruto was sure that Anko only got her eyes from her father for two reasons. One she looked exactly like Amaterasu and two, she acted exactly like her as well, just more sadistic. The two even had a shared love for dango. There were some days when Naruto was tempted to punish her for something she did. However, just like a snake, she always managed to slip away, just like Anko. They ordered their food and sat down at a table outside the bar. Naruto watched as the village continued its daily life and frowned. Kiri, Kumo and Konoha itself had secretly been raising the standard for shinobi and the amount of shinobi, encouraging the civilians to join up. Just over 70% of the population were shinobi, and that was just in Konoha. They had two and a half million citizens, while Kiri and Kumo each had around one and a half million. The war was closing in on them fast, and Naruto was dreading the events leading up to it. Hashirama was still alive, but the man couldn't even be called a shell of his former self. He found it hard to walk even with a walking stick, and he could no longer perform perfect hand signs. His age was showing and it was slowly crippling him. Still, he had to admit that the man's voice could still raise morale. It wasn't long before Naruto realized that he and his team would have to face Hanzo soon. He wasn't worried about not beating Hanzo, he was worried about what would happen a few days after it. Akira had told him that if Tsunade was going to fight like she needed to, Nawaki needed to die. He felt his heart seize up at the thought as he himself had grown to love the boy. He was exactly like Tsunade from his old time described him. She was going to give him her grandfather's cursed necklace soon. He smiled as he remembered their first date. 
She had said her grandfather gave her his necklace and that she was going to give it to the boy when he was an official genin. He was honestly glad when Tsunade had finally hit puberty. She was starting to feel a lot more comfortable in her body and could act more freely than before. And if what Hashirama said is true, she was going to marry him, and the man said whether he likes it or not with a smile. He nearly face-planted whenever he thought of that, but he had to admit he felt the same way, just not so sadistic. He came out of his thoughts when he realized Amaterasu had nearly finished her dango. Happy he asked as the girl munched away at the last stick with a smile. Amaterasu nodded. Come on then, Tsukiko will be looking for you he said as he walked with the girl. He saw that through half the walk, Amaterasu was deep in thought. Something on your mind Rasu-chan he asked with concern. He had grown to love her, and she had also grown to love him. Naruto might have tortured her with training, but he still made sure she wanted for nothing when it came to spending time with him. He wanted the girl to have the happiest life a shinobi could. I heard rumors about an approaching war she said. Naruto sighed. He knew this was coming sooner or later. And he asked. I don't want to lose any of you she said as the tears started to flow. Naruto put his arm around her shoulder and held her close to him. You don't have anything to worry about Rasu-chan, I'm not going to let anything happen to any of our people without a fight, I'm strong enough to protect the village in the founder's place he said in an attempt to comfort the girl. He knew he might have sounded arrogant, but he learned long ago, it's not arrogance if you can back it up. He doubted anyone would ever come close to his full strength, not even the Rikidu Senen in his elder years, but he knew by the time someone did come to that strength, he'd be long dead. When he said full strength, that included Akira's ten tail chakra with his own ten tails worth of chakra. He had used his full strength and a more durable Tsukiyomi, suffice to say that there was nothing left to break before a day of the three days were finished. He kept the girl close to him as she hugged his torso. He then left her at Tsukiko's house and went to the Hokage Tower. He was about halfway there when he turned sharply to grab a small arm. Still too loud, Nawaki-kun he said. He heard a laugh and looked up to see Tsunade. That's not fair Nai-san Nawaki said. He had grown used to the boy calling Nai-san since he spent so much time with Tsunade. Come on Nawaki-kun, you need to get to the gate for your first mission Tsunade said. Naruto's heart skipped a beat. He looked down and saw the Shadai's necklace around Nawaki's neck. Damn, it's sooner than I thought Naruto thought in shock. Nawaki nodded and ran towards the direction of the front gate. Tsunade chuckled at her brother's eagerness. Naruto wrapped his arms around her. And how are you Tsuchan Naruto said as he nuzzled her neck. Tsunade rested her head on his and embraced him. Just fine Naruto-kun she whispered back. Naruto let her go and held her by the waist as they entered the Hokage's tower, by the window of course. The two saw Sirotobi, once again reading his novel. The only difference was that it was Icha Icha. Heh, looks like Jiraiya published his first book he thought. Naruto slowly removed his hand from Tsunade's waist as her look of disgust and anger grew. She cleared her throat and Sirotobi's face almost made Naruto laugh. He looked downright terrified. What have I said about reading that damned book she said with a sickly sweet smile. Sirotobi gulped. It didn't matter to her that he taught her with his own teachers, she was like all other Yuzumaki and was vicious when she wanted to be. Um on chan you've already put him in hospital this week, it wouldn't look good if the Hokage was in hospital every other day Naruto said with a small chuckle. Tsunade turned to him, but he just whispered in her ear, you'll get what you want later, don't ruin my day by being forced to sign paperwork in his place. After Saratobi had his fifth visit to a hospital, he said he couldn't handle the paperwork he had to come back to. So he put a load of high-ranking names in a hat, and Naruto's name came out with a few others. So whenever the Hokage was out of office for any reason, either he or any of the other people selected were to do his paperwork till he came back. And he knew for a fact that he was the only one selected that wasn't out on a mission. As soon as he whispered into Tsunade's ear, a shiver ran down her spine, and a smile cracked at the corner of her mouth. He found it ironic that she hated perverts, and yet she had adopted some of her grandfather's desires. That being what he wanted her to get in a man, a lot of which he got from being a closet pervert. Tsunade huffed her chest out. Fine, I'll see you at the mountain in a few minutes she whispered back. Tsunade then left and Sirotobi looked relieved. I believe that this means more paperwork for you Naruto said as he took out a scroll that was titled S rank report. Team 7 have long since split up after becoming Jinin. They still trained together and went on missions together whenever they got the chance, but with Jiraiya setting up his spy network and Orochimaru experimenting with Naruto's blood clones to see what he could give people with his blood type, that was a rare occurrence. Naruto still did a lot of missions with Tsunade though, mainly because of her infatuation with him, but also because she was, as she said saving up for a special gift, and the money that S-Ranks provided would easily get her there soon. Saratobi's face looked even more horrified at the sight of the scroll than with Tsunade. S rank mission reports took an hour to go through, and he was already up to his ears with paperwork. Well, I have somewhere to be Naruto said as Horatian came out of the tower. 
All this, just because I was relaxing Suratobi muttered. Naruto saw Tsunade sitting on her grandfather's head a few meters away. Still this one place he asked as he put his arm around her shoulder and sat next to her. I can't believe that he is going on his first C rank already she said as she put her on his shoulder. Well, he does have a good teacher Naruto said. Tsunade laughed. Says the guy who managed to earn decades of experience in just a few short years and then find a way to improve the time differential so our minds don't age too fast she answered. And you've beaten every Nara at Shogi she continued. Well, I have battle experience for that Naruto answered. In truth, when he was preparing for the fourth great shinobi war, Shikamaru made him play shogi, and while he couldn't beat him then, he figured out how the Nara clan worked. Achieve the highest kills and only lose the expendables. Well we have the week to ourselves, how do you want to spend, it Naruto said as the sun started to set on the horizon. I don't know, I can't help but think something bad is going to happen Tsunade replied, making Naruto sweat slightly. Just then, an explosion just a few miles away from the village gate rose into the air. That's the way Nawaki's team was meant to go Tsunade cried in distress. The two ran off as fast as they could, and the sight that they saw was a gruesome one. One boy was probably at the heart of the blast, and only by his tattered body could you tell his gender. The Jimin sensei was sitting at a tree with one leg gone. He had already bled out. The girl only seemed to have a mild concussion, but the only one Tsunade was looking at was her brother's slowly dying form. Naruto could clearly hear the blood in his lungs, and if the debris around the boy was any clue, he was hit by a shrapnel explosive tag. Nichan the boy said in between his coughing and spluttering of blood. Tsunade was desperately trying to heal him, but Naruto could see that she knew it was hopeless. Naruto grabbed her hand as both turned a pale color. She looked into his eyes and nodded with a gulp. She then pulled Nawaki's soul from his pain-ridden body, and the boy died, a smile still on his face. Tsunade fell onto Naruto as she wept her heart and soul out. Naruto could feel the Anbu approaching them quickly and sighed as he created a shadow clone to pick the younger, unconscious girl up. Don't worry Tsunade-chan, I won't let depression overcome you, this time Naruto thought as he picked her up and rushed to the hospital with his clone. Two days later, Naruto sighed for what felt like the thousandth time that day. Tsunade's mind was still stable thanks to him, but the sheer exhaustion and grief put her into a chakra-induced coma, she would be out cold for at least another week. He looked down at the necklace that was around Nawaki's neck, blood still covered its pristine surface as it stayed clutched in Tsunade's hand. He had yet to leave the hospital as every time he left for more than 10 minutes, Tsunade would start to act up. Her heart rate and blood pressure would increase, and her breathing would become bad. His presence is what kept her stable. He knew she would be fine and move on from his death eventually, but what troubled him were Nawaki's memories. It was a hit and run from Iowa, and he wondered, were they going to start the attack soon? It was still six months away, but they might start earlier. He felt Hashirama's presence as he entered the room. For a man nearly at the age of 80, he was incredibly healthy. His deterioration had stopped and he managed to get healthy again. He still used a walking stick, but it was more for show than necessity, which baffled doctors. After all, an old man doesn't just go from needing a walking stick to not needing one. Hashirama had shown yet again that the impossible was possible. How is she he said in his old and raspy voice. She'll be fine, it'll just take a while to recover Naruto replied. There was silence as Hashirama walked up to his granddaughter. I believe you know what this is he said as he took a scroll out of his silken robes. Naruto took the scroll and, without even opening it, knew its contents. Hands is finally acting then he said as he opened the scroll. Hashirama nodded. You set out for aim in six days with a squad of jinin, expendable ones just to be safe he said. Naruto knew what the old man was saying. He was sending people he believed to be spies and those at risk of flight. Have Jiraiya and Arachimaru been informed he asked as Hashirama took his necklace from his granddaughter's hand. Yes, oh and Arachimaru has found a way to give Tsunade's Rinnegan a boost to its full potential, very hush hush about it, though Hashirama said as he inspected the necklace. He sighed as he put it around Tsunade's neck. My time is coming, Naruto, I might be the figure of health for my age, but I know myself that I have exactly five years left, ten years go by quick enough, the other five won't be long coming he said. Naruto nodded as he took that into account. Anyone I can trust on my team Naruto said. Ichiha Masaro Hashirama replied. Naruto's eyebrow rose. Doesn't he have a pregnant wife, not sure if it's a good idea to risk the Ichiha clan head son he said. Him and Masaro still had a few fights, but they could put their feelings aside. That and his wife are as scary as Tsunade is. Yes, I know it seems strange, but he's been informed that this is, for you five, a secret mission to get rid of those who aren't loyal Hashirama said, as he pushed Tsunade's hair behind her ears. She should be waking up in a few hours he said. By the way, about you dying, how do you know exactly how long you have left Naruto asked, fearing he already knew the answer. I was visited by the Shinigami last night the elderly man answered, causing Naruto's face to turn grim. 
I think you know what you need to do when that time comes, I'm not just going to die after all he continued. Naruto's grim and saddened look towards Tsunade was as good an answer as any. I wonder how long it is until she gives it to you Hashirama said as he walked to the door. Naruto didn't answer but he didn't need to. Both men knew that Tsunade would give him the necklace like she did with Dan, it wasn't a question of if, it was a question of when. Hashirama then left and Naruto found himself growing drowsy. He looked at Tsunade one last time before he disappeared to the realm of Morpheus. Six hours later, early in the morning, Tsunade's eyes flickered open as she regained consciousness. She looked around the room and realized she was in a hospital. Her confusion turned to grief as she recalled Nawaki's death. That grief turned to anger as she saw his killer's face in the boy's memories. She looked to her right to see that she had been unconscious for three days. She felt the necklace around her neck and gripped it as she cried angry sobs. She then looked to her left to see Naruto, asleep in a chair, bags hanging under his eyes. Has he been here this whole time she thought. She saw a scroll on her bed and picked it up. She went to open it but stopped and put it back in its position as Naruto stirred. His eyes opened and a look of relief showed on his face. He didn't know why as he knew she was going to wake up anyway, but it just felt right. Hey he said softly as he hugged her. She hugged him back and a couple of hot tears fell down her face and onto his shoulder. When she calmed down, Naruto gave her the scroll. I know you don't want to have to do this, but we have a mission Naruto said as he watched her read its contents. She visibly gulped. As in hands the salamander she asked. Naruto nodded. With the memories of her brother's death at bay for at least a few minutes, Naruto told her to get up. They came out of the hospital and almost immediately, people stared at her with looks of sympathy. Naruto cursed. Stupid idiots, they're only making her feel worse he thought. He looked to see Tsunade's face becoming more saddened by the minute and she also started fidgeting. Don't pay them any attention, they're trying to understand what they never will he whispered to her as he held her hand. His uncanny ability to calm her down still amazed him to no end. Though she was still fidgeting from the stars, she no longer looked sad. When they eventually reached the tower, Hashirama was waiting with Siratobi just outside the door. Looks like we won't be jumping through the window Naruto whispered to her. Tsunade snickered a bit. Are you too ready Siratobi asked. Tsunade was confused, but Naruto knew what was going on and nodded. They walked in and instead of going upstairs, they went to a blank wall. When Hashirama was sure no one was in sight, he placed his hand on the wall and channeled chakra through it. The wall parted to reveal a set of stairs. Tsunade looked on in shock as Naruto let her down. Hashirama came in last as he locked the door. They reached the end of the stairs and they saw Jiraiya and Orochimaru standing in the center of the room. There was a table that held four scrolls and six chairs. Have a seat Hashirama said. Tsunade looked just as confused as Jiraiya and Orochimaru did. In these four scrolls are special summoning animals, they are Ba summons Hashirama said. Ba summons were not only fighting summons, they were also often bigger, bulkier and stronger than normal summons. Suratobi summon, Emma, is a perfect example. He was a hell of a lot more muscular and stronger than other apes, even gorillas. Hashirama then handed the four one each. If you want to summon them, you'll need to go to four different wide open places away from Kanoha. According to Enma most summons don't get along, let alone Ba summons, and while there are a few that are allied, there's no way of telling which one Siratobi said to them. Hashirama laid out a map in front of them. These are the four safest places to go he said, drawing circles around four fields in the four positions of a compass. So we just go there, summon the animal, do its little test and get back here Naruto said. The rest of Team 7 looked at him in confusion. Most summons require a test to see if the summoner is worthy of using them, I know for a fact that dogs require loyalty he explained. The four then stared at the map. I'll go north, Naruto said. I'll go east, Tsunade said. Naruto could practically see the gears in her mind turning as she stared at what looked to be a small hole in the land. Hirachimaru went west so Jiraiya was left with south. You have until your mission to complete this task Hashirama said. Team 7 nodded before leaving. Naruto and Tsunade said their goodbyes before going home to prepare. Three hours later, Naruto was nearing the clearing that he was meant to summon his animal on. He already had a pretty good guess at what it was though. He landed in the clearing and walked out to its center before placing the scroll down. He then summoned the animal. His guess was right as a wolf at least the size of the Kaiubi, maybe a little bigger, appeared in a blast of smoke. The wolf looked down at Naruto, examining him. Hmm, tell me human, what makes you worthy of summoning my brethren and I the wolf said. He sounded like he had seen a lot of things, and he didn't sound like he was arrogant, nor did he seem short-tempered. I am willing to put myself through whatever test you put me in to prove my worth he answered humbly. He knew how he could talk to a wolf, thanks to Akira's actions and reactions over the past decade. The wolf seemed to think as it studied Naruto with a cautious eye. Alright human, you will show me your leadership skills by taking my children and helping them catch their first kill, they will do whatever you tell them, do you know the consequences of failure the wolf said. Naruto nodded. 
Seven larger than normal wolves appeared and sat beside Naruto. The kill must be an adult deer of some kind or a predator, such as a bear or even a bison, so long as it's large, you have three days to find a target and want to kill it and bring it back the wolf spoke in a demanding tone. Naruto nodded before leading the wolves towards their hunting ground. It took him several hours to find a scent that was fresh, but when he did, he led the pack at tremendous speeds that even a Jimin would have trouble keeping up with. They reached a hill and just as they looked over it, a herd of caribou. Perfect, this is a wolf's main target he thought. He looked through the grazing herd and saw a large adult male that was limping. Naruto made sure the wolves knew which target they were going after before telling them where to flank the herd. Naruto took two wolves with him and they charged the herd while the other five flanked from two sides. The caribou were quick to react. Naruto couldn't help but laugh as he and the wolves ran towards the herd. Talk about running with the wolves he thought. They caught up quickly but had to stay a meter back until the other wolves flanked. Two figures from each side jumped into the herd and a lot of caribou started screaming. The other three ran into the herd head on. Naruto could now see the injured caribou and it was still fighting. He ran in to kill it but it got away. The wolves were looking to him on whether they should give chase. Follow it, let it bleed to death he said. The wolves then looked back to the caribou and ran to catch up. Naruto sighed and ran. Two days later, the pack and Naruto can be seen stalking the caribou, which was now stumbling as it struggled to stay up. The wolves were impatiently looking towards him for the order to kill, but Naruto knew that the caribou still had energy to kick one of their skulls in. The caribou collapsed and the wolves looked to him again. Quietly, don't let it know you're near he whispered. The wolves started stalking and Naruto stayed behind as he watched them. One wolf seemed cautious and continued looking around as he stalked. Naruto saw this and activated his Rinnegan. He could see another pack of wolves in the distance, but they were heading in the opposite direction and were getting farther away. He looked to his rear and saw nothing. He looked to his right and left and still saw nothing. His eyes widened as he looked up. A flock of vultures and even a few eagles circled the caribou. He looked back at the wolves and saw them kill the caribou and his eyes widened. The vultures overhead were in enough numbers to kill the wolves. He ran out to the wolves, his jigbigan spinning at an incredible speed. He looked up at the vultures as he shouted a matarasu. The birds separated as the center of the flock burst into black flames. The screams of the birds caused the wolves to look up. Naruto saw they were circling and used a matarasu again. This time when the birds were set aflame, the others flew away as fast as possible, finally realizing they were beaten. Naruto made sure that the birds were gone before lifting the caribou's meaty carcass on his shoulders. It was then that Naruto realized how little time he had to get back. He looked at the wolves and they understood. Sprint back and don't stop. Three hours later we can see six heavily panting wolves, one slightly panting wolf and Naruto with sweat rolling down his forehead. The giant wolf inspected the kill and started chuckling. I must say that I'm impressed, that was the fastest time a first kill pack ever took he said. Naruto's eye twitched as he realized what the wolf was saying. He was given what the giant wolf believed was impossible and proved him wrong. Over the next half hour, Naruto told the wolf of the events. I must say, you are a true leader, you deserve to sign my pack's contract, oh, and my name is Tadao he said. A fitting name, Naruto said as he signed the contract. Naruto then took the scroll and left. As he jumped from tree to tree, his mind wandered to the upcoming war. Ever since they had gained Kiri and Kumo's help, things have been hectic in trying to raise as many shinobi as possible. Most graduated after three years, others were forced to stay behind because of their value. He came back to reality as he approached the gates of Konoha. He sighed before going to the Hokage's tower. To his annoyance, all his teammates were lying there, staring at him as he entered. Where the hell have you been, we've been here for the last two days Jiraiya said. You're not the one who had to chase a herd of caribou he grumbled as he sat down next to Tsunade. Tsunade chuckled while Jiraiya and Arachimaru stared at him. Hashirama cleared his throat, gaining their attention. Due to some unfortunate events in AIM, it is too treacherous to cross the border for the next two days, so rest up he said, finishing with a smirk towards Naruto. The four left the tower, Naruto and Tsunade heading in the direction of the monument. I think we can both guess what our summons were Foxy Chan Naruto whispered into Tsunade's ear, causing her to shiver with pleasure. Well then you're right, Akami Kanshi whispered back. They got to the top of the monument and Naruto could feel something was wrong as he sat down. Tsunade was staring off in one direction. He looked towards it and frowned. She never got time to grieve he thought as he turned back towards her. He pulled her head onto his shoulder and almost immediately, she let the floodgates open. She cried and cried until she was left with angry sighs and sobs. All the while Naruto hugged her and held her head to his shoulder. It's okay Tsunade-chan he said softly. She had eventually cried herself to sleep and knowing her tendency to cling, he walked back to his own home. He looked down at her face as she buried it into his chest. Don't worry Tsunade-chan, I'm not going to leave, you he said softly as he entered his house. 
As he lay down on his bed, Tsunade still clinging to him for life, he smiled. You don't have to fear my death, after all, I won't bleed, out he said as he fell to the realm of Morpheus. Naruto slowly opened his eyes as he tensed his muscles to wake them up. He noticed that Tsunade was sleeping peacefully as she clutched onto his arm. He smiled and created a couple of cage bunchons to make breakfast for them. He cradled Tsunade's head in his chest and kissed the top of her head. She snuggled closer and Naruto couldn't help but think how far he'd come since he came to this time. He'd gone from calling Tsunade Bachan to calling her Tsuchan. From granny to lover, man that sounds weird he thought. He started to rub her hair and she sighed in contentment. Good morning Tsuchan he said. Tsunade looked up to him and kissed him on the cheek. Morning Narukun she said sleepily. We have the whole day to ourselves as he whispered into her ear as he nibbled at it. Tsunade chuckled. Leave that for later, I want to make the most of today, and if I have my way, you won't be able to go on the mission she said, causing a pleasurable shiver to go down Naruto's spine. His eyes narrowed slightly as the memories of his shadow clones came to him. Come on, we've got breakfast waiting for us as he said as he got up and got dressed in clean clothes, seeing as how he slept in the other clothes. Tsunade pulled out a scroll, and a fresh clean outfit was in it. They walked downstairs to a breakfast fit for royalty. Anyone else would gape at the sheer quantity of food, but when two people are feeding for monstrous appetites, it's only a light snack. The table was cleared in minutes. Haman Tsunade said as she tugged his arm. You're taking me shopping she said, causing Naruto to groan. Don't complain, it's not like you can't carry the bags, and I don't buy that much, clothes Tsunade said as she dragged him out of the house. You more than make up for it in how much you drink Naruto retorted. That's what happens when a girl can't get drunk Tsunade said with a grin. Naruto sighed. Just because Kurama keeps you from exploiting the effects of alcohol on yourself doesn't mean you can drink my money away he said. Oh shut it, this is my day, not yours she answered, sticking her tongue out at him. Naruto chuckled as he put his arm around her shoulder and pulled her close to him. She rested her head on his shoulder. It may be your day, but it will be my night he whispered with a smile. Tsunade chuckled before leading him into what would be the first of many shops. After an hour of roaming around, Tsunade decided she wanted lunch. Naruto sighed again, being the granddaughter of the Shadame Hokage, Tsunade had expensive tastes. So he was surprised when they walked past several expensive restaurants and made their way towards a small stand that he knew he'd seen before. I thought I'd treat you to something she said as they entered the stand. Naruto was hitting himself on the head when he saw her ran the stand. Damn it, how could I forget Tuchiji's stand he thought. By the looks of it, it was only just starting up. And they say you have to start from the bottom he heard a man mumble. He saw a much younger Tucci standing behind the counter. Not many people get two famous shinobi as their first customers, what can I get you Tucci asked with a nervous smile. Naruto was impressed. Tucci, while holding a nervous smile, kept his voice intact and his posture the same. One large Maizo Raymon for me, Naruto said. I'll have the same, Tsunade said. So, why am I getting the so-called treat? Naruto asked. Tsunade smiled and tapped the side of her nose. Naruto chuckled. Here you go, that'll be 18 Ryo Tucci said as he put two bowls down. Tsunade paid and they dug in. The look on Tsunade's face made Naruto want to laugh. Tsunade chuckled. This is really good, hell, it's better than the golden leaf she said. I'm sure you're exaggerating, Senju-sama Tucci said. No really, this is good, she said with a smile. I can agree with that, Naruto said. Tucci was at a loss for words. Naruto and Tsunade continued to eat the ramen until there was nothing left. Tsunade got up to go to the bathroom, leaving Naruto with Tucci. Well, uh, Naruto said, motioning for teacher's name since it would be strange if he already knew it. Tucci, he answered. Well Tucci-san, that was the best Raymond I've ever had, looks like you've got a lifetime, customer Naruto said as he picked the bags up. Tsunade came out of the bathroom and they left. As they walked, Naruto could see that Tsunade was up to mischief, but seeing as how the sun was still up, he didn't know what that could be. So tell me, what are you up to? He asked. This time, Tsunade just smiled. Naruto stared at her, trying to figure out what she was planning. He sighed when he realized what she was planning. Tsunade was the kind of person that was content with just cuddling on a couch. Looks like she wants both tonight he thought. They were just around the corner from the Senju compound when Tsunade stopped. I need to get something, and you can put the bags in my room she said as she walked into the compound. Naruto sighed. He walked into her house and while he went up to her room, she went down to the basement. He put her bags on her bed, and just as he was about to exit, he noticed something. Damn it, can't we get one day of peace he mumbled to himself. He turned sharply to grasp a kunai that was being held by another man. The man jumped over him to avoid being caught and raced downstairs. Naruto chased after him and just as he was about to catch the man, the man turned to try to knock him off balance with a kick. Naruto didn't expect this and was forced to parry his kick, giving the man an extra meter. 
The man was nearly out of the building, but soon Aid was coming up from the basement, and when she saw the man rushing towards the door, she dropped what she was carrying and jumped to try to get in front of him. She didn't get in front of him, but she managed to grab him for a split second. That was all that Naruto needed to jump on him. He quickly put a paralysis seal on the man, rendering him helpless. Naruto now had a good look at the man's face. Aim, he said. Tsunade looked at the man and indeed, he had a hit I ate for a megaker. He removed the breathing apparatus from him. The man started to choke so Naruto pulled the man's soul out before he died. Well, why was he here Tsunade asked. Shit Naruto mumbled as his eyes grew to the size of dinner plates. The spies have already left on the mission, they took Masaru with them, they're trying to get him killed Naruto said. Quick, you get Jiraiya, I'll get Orochimaru, send a clone to Jiji to tell, him Tsunade said as she ran towards her teammate's house. Naruto created a clone, and instead of running for Jiraiya's house, he ran to the hot springs. He found the man, peeking at women as usual. He grabbed him by the shoulder causing him to turn around. Jiraiya at first looked annoyed, but the look on his teammate's face made him worry. We need to go, the spies have taken Masaru on the mission, they're trying to get him killed Naruto said. Jiraiya closed his book and put it away. I'll meet you at the gate at 5 he said before taking off. Naruto ran back home to get his summoning scroll before running to the gate. He remembered when he had finally managed to befriend Masaru. It was during the Jinin exams and the circumstances couldn't have been more unusual. Flashback. Team 7 were sitting in a cafeteria, talking about what they thought the Jinin exams would be like. Except Naruto was awfully quiet as he stared at Masaru. The man's old team had recently been killed and his old Jinin sensei crippled. So that would explain the extreme isolation, but the Ichiha seemed to be thinking of something else, and whatever it was his face only got more contorted with rage as he thought about it. He didn't understand what he could possibly be thinking. He had recently married a beautiful woman, Ichiha of course, and his new wife was two weeks pregnant. So what could he be so upset about Naruto thought. He got up and approached the older man, his team not noticing him. What's got you so angry he asked as he stood beside him. Masaru was quiet. Come on dude, you've got a wife who's pregnant, what could possibly get you down Naruto said. Naruto knew he had a way of getting things out of people. He blamed his persistence. Masaru sighed. Is there a place we could talk more privately he asked. Naruto led him to one of the empty lounges and put a series of privacy seals up. So he asked as he turned towards the man. You know the way I'm a fool he said. No one uses that to say they don't have parents anymore you know Naruto said with a smirk. Masaru closed his eyes and craned his neck back. I found out who my father was and more importantly, my grandfather he said. Naruto had a bad feeling about what was coming next. My father was Ichiha Mitsuo, my grandfather's name was his breathing was heavy and his Sharingan formed. My grandfather's name was Ichiha Madara he said. Naruto was shocked. Does Hashirama know this, did Tabarama know this he wondered. My grandfather left a scroll for either my father or I, whichever got to his stage of the Sharingan he continued. His Sharingan morphed into its eternal Magicum stage. In that scroll was a message, it said that he wasn't banished from the Ichiha clan because he wanted to create a better world through power, he was banished because they were jealous of his power and didn't like the idea that there was one Ichiha who was better than the rest Masaru's words made Naruto tremble. What's going on he thought. When he spoke to Hashirama the night he left, he also spoke of this and said how can I protect a clan that would prefer my death, and when I asked Hashirama about this, he told me of the night he fought Madara by now, Masaru was nearly to tears as his face was once again contorted in rage. He told me that Madara told him of how it wasn't safe to keep the Ichiha clan around the way they were then, and that his attack against him was simply to see if he had the guts to kill his clan, should push come to shove Masaru was now openly crying. But when I went back to the scroll, I read something that made my blood run cold he said. Naruto was listening intently and stared at him, waiting for him to continue. The Ichiha are planning to kill me and my family to forever end the possibility of another Madara Naruto understood why he would have so much anger now. There are very few who are against this that are older than us, the children are the only ones who don't know, I found out about this just yesterday he said. Tears were streaming down his face as the battle hardened Ichiha was reduced to a crying mess. Naruto stared at him in shock. Well then, I'll just have to help you survive he said, holding out his hand. Masaru looked at him as if he'd grown a second head. The Ichiha are traitors to their own kin, and I'm not going to let a friend be killed for selfishness he said with a smile. Flashback end, he knew the Ichiha were planning to enact this plan soon after the war ended, so he had plenty of time, but it wouldn't matter if Masaru died. He got to the gate just as Hashirama and his clone arrived. The rest of Team 7 was already there. You four are going to need to hurry, apparently he was told you four would catch up, and they left around two hours ago Hashirama said. He didn't want this to happen. He didn't want the grandson of his best friend to die because of the mission he gave him. The four immediately ran for aim. 
Naruto could see that there were several lengths of shinobi wire across the forest as they sprinted from tree to tree. They're tracking us he said. His teammates nodded. They were probably planning an ambush. They ran for an hour before Naruto activated his Rinnegan. His eyes widened and when Tsunade saw this, she activated her own. It's not an ambush anyway Naruto said. Jiraiya and Orochimaru saw them staring off into the distance as they approached a chasm that separated High no Kuni from Aim no Kuni. When they got to the other side, Masaru was panting heavily and had cuts all over his body. Finally, the main event has arrived a man at the front said. Naruto looked to see Hansm standing there with his scythe in hand. A poison mist suddenly filled the air. Jiraiya, Orochimaru, grab Masaru and get back Naruto shouted. The two complied and just as they jumped back, the poison reached Naruto and Tsunade. Kill them Hansm said. A group of men with breathing apparatuses rushed towards them. Naruto, that poison was meant to paralyze, they think you can't move Akira said inside his head. He glanced towards Tsunade and figure Kurama said the same. Just before the men got to them, they drew their weapons and slew the men in seconds. The miniature army on the other side was astounded. Naruto looked at Hansm. Try and actually give us a warm up this time he said. Hansm chuckled. He motioned for his men to attack. If one were to watch Naruto and Tsunade, they would see two people fighting in perfect harmony. One slashing their opponent's neck while the other killed the one about to attack the other. Hansm's men were becoming terrified and most ran away. Naruto and Tsunade now stood on a scattered pile of bodies. Naruto sheathed his swords and they approached Hansm. Naruto stopped, grabbed Tsunade and threw her back to Jiraiya and Orochimaru. Just then, a yellow gas emitted from Hansm's body. This is the strongest paralysis poison the salamanders have to offer, even I would take a while to adjust to it, but unfortunately, you will not be such a pleasure Hansm said. Facing Naruto, he held up his scythe. Come on Naruto thought desperately. Hansm's scythe was now halfway towards his head. Now Naruto thought as he jumped back as quickly as he could. He did not escape unharmed though. His face now adorned a large gash that ran diagonally from his left eyebrow to the right side of his jaw. The look on Hansm's face told a story. Incredible, to think you were able to counteract the poison and escape with a mere gash hands mumbled to himself as he pulled his scythe out of the ground. Naruto, who was now bleeding profusely, held his wound, not taking his eyes off hands. He grinned. You certainly live up to your name he said as he began to heal his wound. I'm glad I can say the same hands said. Naruto drew his swords and grinned. Let's dance he said. The two men rushed in to attack each other. Naruto gave hands credit. He would likely need the Rinnegan to kill him. Hansm's scythe came from the side, and when he brought up his sword to block it, he was forced to use Kamui as the scythe unlatched from its handle and swiftly went around his body. Hansm grabbed the other end and pulled, only for the chain connecting the two sides to slip through Naruto. Naruto reached towards the man to grab his soul, but Hansm jumped away. This could complicate things, Hansm mumbled. His eyes grew to the size of dinner plates as he jumped to his right. He was hit by flying rocks that Tsunade had hit out of the ground, right where he was standing. He then sunshine away as a fireball came at him from behind him. He saw Jiraiya, Masaru and Orochimaru standing on the other end of the chasm. Masaru didn't look to be in shape to fight, so he guessed that it was the other two that nearly killed him. Summoning he said. A giant salamander was now under his feet as he stood several stories above the ground. You four are incredibly strong together, the Densetsu no Yanin, a fitting name Hans mumbled to himself with a chuckle. His salamander then attacked. Team 7 prepared to defend against the giant, but a large wall of fire came from behind them. Katen. Nkamakyaku they heard. Team 7 looked behind them to see Masaro. He then collapsed and started panting. They turned back to see Hansm was gone. Damn, he got away, Tsunade said. Doesn't matter, we need to heal Masaro before going anywhere Naruto said. Masaro was now close to unconsciousness. Naruto felt three familiar presences but stayed quiet. He cringed as he saw the chest wound Masaro took. It would have ended his career only for the Rinnegan. The process was slow, but Masaru was healed within the hour. Naruto picked up Masaru and they left. Naruto felt the three figures following them and smiled slightly. Due to Masaru's wounds being healed, they didn't want to risk opening them up again, so they had to travel slower than they should have. This gave the three figures the ability to stay close to them. Tsunade, who was beside him, turned to him. You do know there are three people following us, right? She asked. They're just kids, let's see who they're following, we'll see what they want when we're back in the village Naruto answered. The kids were obviously great at stealth because when they passed the gate, they slipped by all the anbu. They went to the Hokage's tower where Hashirama, Hiruzen and Masaru's wife were waiting. They all turned to the team, and Masaru's wife came running as fast as her pregnant belly would let her. He's just unconscious, Naruto said. He laid Masaru down on a chair in the office before standing up to give his report. While well, we managed to bring Masaru back, Hansm escaped and is still at large he said. Hashirama sighed. 
We know, this arrived just minutes ago he said, holding a book. Naruto took it and opened it. All five of them were listed in it already, but the updates were now there. Hansen was the first man to get away alive since the Mizukage to give an update. He saw Masaru first and read aloud. Name. Ichiha Masaru, rank. Borderline S, affiliation. Kanahagakur, appearance. 6 foot 3 inches, white, long, black spiky hair, typical Ichiha clothing, known associates. Yuzumaki Naruto, Senju Tsunade, Arachimaru, Jiraiya, Ichiha Madara, grandfather, warning, approach with extreme caution, bounties. Aim. 40 million Ryo dead or alive, Iowa. 80 million Ryo dead, Suna 100 million Ryo alive, skills. Ninjutsu. Cage, Tijutsu. Jinin, Jinjutsu. Cage, Dijutsu. Eternal Manjikam Sharingan. Well that's bad Naruto mumbled. You should see yourselves Hashirama said. Naruto turned the page and his mouth hung open. Names. Yuzumaki Naruto, Senju Tsunade, Arachimaru, Jiraiya, Ranks. Naruto. SS, Tsunade. Hi S, Jiraiya and Arachimaru. S, Appearance. Naruto. 6 foot 8 inches, white, spiky, blonde hair, Senju Tsunade. 6 foot 3 inches, white, blonde hair, Arachimaru. 6 foot 5 inches, pale, long black hair, Jiraiya. 6 foot 6 inches, white, long white spiky hair. Warning, do not approach. Bounties. Naruto. Aim. 60 million Ryo dead, Iowa. 160 million Ryo dead, Suna. 150 million Ryo dead, Sunade. Aim. 50 million Ryo dead or alive, Iowa. 160 million Ryo dead, Suna. 130 million Ryo dead, Arachimaru. Aim. 47.5 million Ryo dead or alive, Iowa. 115 million Ryo dead or alive, Suna. 120 million Ryo dead, Gureya. Aim. 47.5 million Ryo dead or alive, Iowa. 110 million Ryo dead or alive, Suna. 126 million Ryo dead or alive, Monikers. As given by Hansm of the Salamander, the Densetsu no Yanin. The room was quiet. Everyone but Hashirama was in shock. The Densetsu no Yanin, how fitting here is in thought. Hashirama cleared his throat and ended the silence. You're all wanted and will likely have to deal with bounty hunters who went heed the warning he said. Go home and rest up he said. Still not saying a word everyone went to leave. Jiraiya picked Masaru up and left with his wife. Naruto grabbed Tsunade and they left through the door. Well, that's a first Hashirama said. As they walked, Naruto remembered the three presences following them. They had heard everything and were still tailing them. He turned around and held up his hand. Banshim Tenen he said. The three figures came flying towards him. They hit the ground hard and were rendered unconscious. They were dressed in rags and looked like they hadn't eaten in days. Orphans, why would they be following us? Tsunade wondered. I don't know Naruto said. He picked two of them up and went back to his destination. Tsunade sighed as she picked the last one up and walked with him. They entered Tsunade's house and put the three children in her guest room bed. They then exited the room, and Naruto set up seals to make sure they couldn't escape the room. He also put a seal that would let them hear the three's conversations. They went down and started to prepare something to eat. I still can't believe it Tsunade said. It's strange though isn't it Naruto said. Tsunade looked at him in confusion. He didn't include Masaro despite the fact that he held them off for us to arrive, plus the battle was relatively short and the best we did was make him evade, Masaro made him flee Naruto said. This caused Tsunade to think. He did it for a reason and I'm dying to find out, Naruto said. They heard a groan coming from the seal. Where am I? A girl's voice said. Shit the girl whispered. Naruto chuckled. He got three plates and put the food on them. He then made two clones and brought them up. He opened the door to see the girl pretending to be asleep. He shook her to try and get her to realize he knew she wasn't asleep. He sighed. Come on girl, I have something for you and your friends to eat. The girl's eyes snapped open. Naruto handed her a plate and smiled. His clones then dispelled and he left. He and Tsunade started eating their own food when he heard the girl waking her friends up. We shouldn't, it could be poisoned, one of the boys said. I don't know, why would they poison it? The girl said. Because we followed them back and know who they are, the boy repeated. Naruto and Tsunade chuckled. They have an active imagination anyway, Tsunade said. Well hell you then, I am too hungry to care the girl said. They could hear the girl eating loudly. Sorry Yahiko, I'm with Conan, another boy said. The two lovers then heard the boy start to eat with just as little manners as the girl. Naruto put his plate in the sink and walked back up. He could sense the boy was behind the door, waiting for him to open it so he could get away. He created a cage bunchen and stood back. The clone opened the door, and the boy burst out and ran straight into Naruto. I've never met an orphan who didn't accept food, Naruto said. And no I didn't poison it, yes, I have been listening and no, I have no reason to kill you for what you know, because soon, that'll be public knowledge. This didn't help as Yuhiko kept looking around for a place to escape. 
He bumped into the cage. Dot, I give food to an orphan, and he rejects it, I let him sleep in a bed, and he tries to escape, you really are a strange boy Naruto said. What do you want Yahiko asked. I want to know why you followed us back and what you were hoping to accomplish Naruto answered. I suggested it so we could get food the red-haired boy said, his eyes closed. Ashamed of those special eyes Naruto asked. The three orphans froze. Let me guess, Kanoha Shinobi killed your parents only for you to kill them, and you woke up with them Naruto said. Yahiko and Konan looked at him in bewilderment. People used to beat me up for them the boy said. I'm surprised they haven't tried to gouge them out, if Hanzo knew about those eyes, you wouldn't be alive Nagato Naruto said. How do you name it Nagato asked. You three realize your names are on every one of your possessions right Naruto asked. Nagato and Konan blushed slightly while Yahiko glared at him. Those eyes of yours, they are called the Rinnegan, they are the eyes of the Rikidu Senen, the founder of Ninjutsu Naruto's words shocked the three. It's not complete though, hell those eyes aren't even yours, but that won't make a difference he continued. What do you mean Nagato asked. Both I and my partner have been blessed with it, but somebody wanted you to help them and transplanted those eyes into you Naruto said. To be honest, being an Uzumaki is the only reason you're not going insane Naruto said. And Uzumaki Konan asked. Well last I checked there was a whole village full of them in Yuzushi Agakura Naruto said, as if it was obvious. How can you tell he's in Uzumaki Konan asked. Red hair is a dead giveaway, though some, like me, don't have it Naruto answered. Uzumakis also have a tendency to have long hair he said. It was obvious that Nagato's hair was long for his age. You can stay here if you want, we'll give you meals and shelter, but it's up to you he said as he exited the room. He went down to Tsunade's room and he smiled at what he saw waiting for him. Tsunade was motioning for him to come forward. He locked the door and put silencing seals on the four corners of the room. The next morning, Naruto was staring at the ceiling as Tsunade cuddled his chest, using it as a pillow. They had hardly any sleep due to their stamina. He ran his fingers down his recent scar. First I get my eye slashed at, now I get a warrior's scar, what's next he thought out loud. It doesn't matter, you're still as handsome as ever Tsunade said as she kissed him on the cheek. Naruto kissed her back on forehead and smiled. So what could you possibly want this time he asked. How about a clone making us breakfast in bed she whispered into his ear. Naruto smirked and made a clone as he kissed Tsunade again on the forehead. So, what about this war Tsunade asked. Apparently due to some landslides in Iowa, they're held back for two more months, leaving plenty of time for nightly activities Naruto said. Tsunade smiled as her spine shivered. Naruto began to get dressed. What are you doing Tsunade asked. In case you forgot, there are three children in this house Naruto said. Tsunade frowned and pouted. Naruto stared at her. He slowly shook his head no and smiled. Fine Tsunade said as she got out of bed. Naruto chuckled as he walked downstairs. Tsunade would take at least 10 minutes fixing her hair up, so he had time for a cup of coffee. He entered the kitchen where he saw Conan eating breakfast his clone had given her. She didn't seem to notice him as he took some coffee from the machine. She was eating quietly and appeared to be deep in thought. His clone then dispelled and he sat down next to her. Arayo for your thoughts he asked her. This startled her. She must have been really thinking, she didn't even notice I sat down Naruto thought. Conan stared at him and then down at her food. You don't want to be helpless like you were against hands do you Naruto said. Conan's eyes started to tear up. Naruto wrapped his arm around her and pulled her close to him. Conan seemed surprised by this, but that didn't make her pull away, as she simply turned into him and cried. Naruto gently rubbed her head and hugged her. Sigh, when did I get so good with kids he thought. He was surprised when she hugged him back. Tsunade then walked in and smiled. Naruto looked down at Conan and smiled ever so slightly. Naruto brought his head down and whispered softly into her ear. I can train you to be strong, I can help you so you never feel helpless ever again. Conan looked up at him. The smile that now adorned his face was comforting. Will my friends be trained too she whispered. Of course Naruto answered. Conan smiled. Well, this is going to be fun Naruto and Tsunade thought.